against Iowa, Bedlam came early. With number two upended, the race to the BCS title is now a wide open sprint. Tonight, the Oklahoma Sooners are on the road here at Baylor trying to surge to that finish line. Hey, hey, we got three more. We in Oklahoma, baby. People stand up. Remember that. Let's go get it. The hometown Bears fans have never celebrated a win over Mighty OU, but they've also never had an offense quite like this. Robert Griffin has brilliant speed and a rocket launcher for a right arm. He'll look to outduel Oklahoma's talented Landry Jones, who tries to keep their BCS title hopes alive. Welcome to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Coming to you from Floyd Casey Stadium here in Waco. For 62 years, it's been the home of the Baylor Bears. And over the course of that time, there have been few games with more on the line this late in the season. Number five, Oklahoma faces the offensive-minded 22nd ranked Baylor Bears. BCS standings are brought to you by Vizio. Of course, Oklahoma State had the clear path up until their upset loss to Iowa State last night. The great debate begins. Which one loss team can make the strongest argument to play for the title? The Sooners have to get past Baylor just to stay in that conversation. And good evening to you, everybody. I'm Joe Tessitore, joined by Matt Millen, and we will say hello to Aaron Andrews in moments. Oklahoma is dealing with injuries. Dominic Whaley, the starting running back, is out for the season. Ryan Broyles, the star receiver, is out for the season. But, Matt, you brought up an interesting point to me. You said, Joe, it's not, a, it's not about who's going to step up. It's about the whole team coming together. Yeah, that's exactly what it is, because the coaches can put a game plan together, and they can put people in spots, Joe, but they really don't know until it's game time. So who's going to step up? Well, they know what they can put in those positions, but one guy they do know that has stepped up all season long and that has been Landry Jones. Landry Jones has been on fire. Why? Well, first, he's very accurate. The ball is exactly where it's supposed to be. Tight coverage, small windows, he puts it right there. One of the reasons he does it so well is he anticipates things. So you can throw to spots knowing they're going to be there. He has great confidence in those receivers, and then he can make all the throws. Well, he'll throw you open, take a good look right there. He's done it from the beginning of the season all the way through. And he's expecting to do it tonight. Now, as for Baylor, they have a quarterback who may be one of the most dynamic athletes in yeah. all of college football, Robert Griffin III. I think it's fair to say for a guy who is known for his speed, this year he's talked about as a much more mature, polished passer. And you can see it. I mean, to be frank with you, if we go to the beginning of the season to now, he's gotten better. And they'll expect him to get even better here tonight. Robert Griffin III does a lot of things. But the main thing that he does is he has great mechanics. It starts with your feet. Always have to have good feet, good balance, nice little bend in his knees right there. He never gets out of balance. See the shoulder straight across, and then he sees that front shoulder, and he drives it forward. Watch this, right inside, front shoulder pointing through, feet are perfect, drive to the ball, point and throw. He has done it extremely well all season long. He's done it early, he's done it often, and Joe, they're going to need him to do it tonight if they got a shot. And because of him, Baylor fans have been enjoying back-to-back -back years now as a bowl-eligible team. But this, the biggest home test. Sooners looking for BCS glory. Two high-scoring offenses with plenty of get-up. that seismic shift to the BCS standings. Oklahoma State was upset by Iowa State, and that greatly affects Oklahoma's chances. Let's say hello to the third member of our broadcast team, Aaron Andrews. Good evening, Aaron. Good evening, Tats. And you know what? It's guys like you that Bob Stoops is warning his team about, actually. He said, 
after Oklahoma State lost, he gathered up his guys and he said, don't listen to all the analysts, all the broadcasters out there. We are still very much in this thing. We have three games left. You never know the way this thing is going to shake out. And it's up to us just to concentrate at the task at hand. He's been very candid with his team. He was candid with them this week. We could be a one-loss team playing for this thing. So don't worry about what anyone's saying. Just focus on yourself. You never know what's going to happen, Tess. Yeah, we found that out last night, Aaron, as Robert Griffin III will get his first chance. Baylor receives here as OU won the toss and deferred. And touchback there with Goodley fielding it. So out comes Robert Griffin III. Had season-ending knee surgery in 09, came back, was sensational. In fact, last week showed what he can do late after kind of lingering through three quarters. Matt came alive to spark a fourth-quarter comeback at Kansas, forcing overtime and then the win. Biggest thing with Robert Griffin in this offense is they cannot start slow. They started slow a week ago. They do that against Oklahoma and fall down early. That's a position they do not want to be in. They do not feel comfortable coming back, trying to add more points. Terrence Ganaway is the starting running back, flanking Griffin in the shotgun. And a delayed handoff goes to Ganaway for just a minimal gain. A look at the impact players for the Bears. Well, take a good look at him, and you just saw him. Robert Griffin III is your main guy, but Ganaway's the big power back on the inside. Number one right there, Kendall Wright is the guy who's going to make the big plays, mostly in the slot. They use him to motion around a lot. And Mike Hicks defensively is the guy who's going to have to come up big against that three receiver set. Glasgow Martin now joins Griffin in the backfield. Second and nine, Griffin pumps, then goes downfield, and wide open is Kendall Wright. Goodbye. Touchdown, Baylor, but a flag is down at the 18-yard line, so we'll have to check that. This one's going to come back, Joe, but they set this one up perfectly. And it wasn't just on the second play. It was set up in the first play. Holden, offense, number 68, 10-yard penalty, second down. Mark Riles fired up in his fourth year as head coach. 68's big left tackle, Cyril Richardson, right here. Take a good look at him. He just gets his hands up. They're seeing something right there. Right up around the throat, Joe. And they're going to call that every time. Those hands are down low. Get down and on the hips after you do that. They won't call it. But it's up around the throat. That's too obvious. They're going to throw it every time. That play, though, did give us a glance of uh, the skill set of Kendall Wright and his oh, athletic good. ability. He can create separation. It's Arp Riles, who has never beaten OU. Three shots while at Baylor. And then one time a loss as the head coach at Houston. So second and 20 after the penalty. And Griffin is swallowed up in the backfield by Frank Alexander. We talked about getting off to a fast start. That penalty wiped out exactly what they were looking for because they're looking also, don't forget, these are just, these are kids who haven't beaten this Oklahoma team. They're looking for confidence. And they can get confidence off of big plays like you saw. And he took that one away. Third and 22 now. Griffin under pressure, and it is caught at the 20. Obviously, it'll be well short of the first down. Terrence Williams was the receiver there. And a flag comes in late. I think I Corey think. Nelson was pressuring Robert Griffin. I think he took a pretty good shot. Personal foul. Griffin the pass. Defense number seven. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Automatic first down. That was Corey Nelson who came in against the junior quarterback. Well, they, they come with the blitz, and it's Corey Nelson. When he's in, you have to be aware of him. They're just going to bring him right around inside. Well done up front by the defensive front of the Oklahoma Sooners. They're going to open this, and here it comes, right down the middle. They called him because he went too high, jumped up in his face. But I want you to watch the other part of it. There's the hit. But RG3 stood right in there and delivered that ball perfectly. Oh, he's a gutsy kid. Now we got some motion. 
False start. Offense. Number 68. Five yard penalty. First down. So penalty filled the first couple minutes here between Oklahoma and Baylor. As the touchdown to right was wiped off the board. And then a first down coming off the 15 yarder of roughing the passer. Big deal though for me is this Oklahoma defense has the ability to be able to match up with personnel. And so that allows them to bring extra pressure. And they'll blitz inside. And Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, he's not afraid to do it as you saw on his third down. Here's another one. Danaway searching for some real estate, but unable to find it as both Alexander and Nelson corralled him. It's Brent Venables, their defensive coordinator, who's an aggressive guy and, and an infectious type of guy. And he's one of those guys that it just kind of pours out of him. You can feel the enthusiasm, and his players respond to him. Not only in practice, but game day, you see the same things. He had a lot of respect for what Art Bryles and Phil Montgomery have done with this Baylor offense when we chatted with them this week. So they do things with their personnel, very different, you know, gimmicky stuff, but stuff that you respect. So then 19, Griffin has a wobbly ball that looked like it was deflected at the line of scrimmage. As Nelson and Lewis were pressuring Griffin. Well, one thing you have to always remember when Corey Nelson is on the field, and he he's, he's an excellent athlete, and they love to blitz him, and he's got a good ability to make people miss. You saw that right there. He was blocked. He redirected, came back, and got his hands up. This kid, they, I don't, not a lot of people know about him. He, he's one of their best defenders. Extremely athletic, but great instincts. Just a sophomore is Nelson. We've already seen tonight how fast he can get into that backfield of Baylor's. Third and 19 now. And a man up top. Can take a strike downfield. Well overthrown. And another flag comes in. As Jamel Fleming had the coverage on Lanier Sampson. You mentioned Sampson. Jamel Fleming's their best cover guy. And I mentioned at the top of the at the top of the play, he was all alone, man to man. Pass interference. Defense, number 32. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic. First down. So Robert Griffin III sees the same thing that you're seeing. All alone by himself, you're going to take that shot to Sampson outside. Fleming's all over him. Actually does a nice job of using the sideline as his extra defender, but they got the bump and they got the flag. Second time that a penalty has converted for them on a third and long. Ganaway now coming to the near side, and Ganaway is really struggling to find any room against that front seven. David King and Demontre Hurst were quick to get to him. Well, Joe, here's the one thing that, that he has. He has power. Ganaway's a power guy. He's 240-some pounds. He's not going to run away from this Oklahoma defense. This defense can flat out run. Big, strong, physical runner. They go empty here. And it looks like they're trying to set up the pass. And indeed, they do to Terrence Williams. As that was Gerard Monk, who they threw the lateral to, who then had the option to look downfield. But but the Montre Hurst played it beautifully. Watch Hurst down here in the corner. See, he keeps getting his depth. He sees that it's a backward pass. Great awareness. And now the screen to the near side with Goodley. And Goodley surges ahead. Crossing midfield are the Baylor Bears. You know, Monk was a high school quarterback. And Baylor, as we talked about, Venable said, he said, listen, very innovative, gimmicky kind of offense, but successful with it. You can see the hurry up as they race over the ball. You see how the official is standing over the ball, and that's on purpose. Once the offense, once they bring a player in, you have to allow the defense to be able to do the same. This is Salubi now. He tries to get the edge and makes a move back to the inside. As Salubi is able to get it to the 33-yard line before he is forced out by Travis Lewis. Lubley has himself a little bit of speed. He's able to get to the edge. Looks like they were aided a little bit by some hands over at Niver, the uh, the tight end. So Luby's a local kid from Waco and had a couple scores last year against Oklahoma. Second and three, Ganaway the lone back. Play action. Griffin launches it to the end zone and overthrows Kendall Wright this time. Another big hit on Griffin. Another blitz off the edge. Frank Alexander comes this time. 
So if you are Brent Venables, it's clear what his message is right now. They're going to bring people, and they want to knock him down. They want his uniform dirty, and they want to punish him early and often. And Venables said, as he goes, Baylor goes, and we have to make him pay. They've done that early here on this drive. Third and three now. They go with the wide receiver sweep, and Reese cannot escape. A tackle for loss that time as Javon Harris was not fooled. Tevin Reese taken down near the 40-yard line. One of the marks of all good defenses is their ability to defend the perimeter with speed. Oklahoma does it well. They have the ability to be able to run. Baylor is going to struggle trying to get to the edge on this defense. So fast and athletic, that front seven of the Sooners. So Spencer Roth, the big six foot four, 230 pound freshman punter for the Bears comes out. And Kenny Stills is the return man. He's just going to set up shop at about the 12 yard line. And a fair catch at the 16. So the Bears cross midfield, couldn't come up with a score. Landry Jones on deck when we return. Our rivalry history is brought to you by Sprint. Baylor has never beaten Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. 0 for 20. OU is the only Big 12 team Baylor has never defeated. You see that average margin of victory? Not many close games. So Landry Jones to pass on Oklahoma's first play of the game, and he completes it to Jazz Reynolds, a sophomore who may be one of those guys who looks to step up with the absence of Ryan Broyles. He's got it. His whole thing is just be consistent because he has big plays in him. Roy Finch, and he scoots out to the 26-yard line. Look at the impact players, Matt. Well, we talked about Oklahoma. It all starts this offense with Landry Jones, like you talked about. But Roy Finch is a guy who can get in space and make some plays. Kenny Stills, that's a guy who has big play speed to get down the field. And we already saw Frank Alexander getting pressure. He's the guy who gives them consistent pressure on the quarterback. There is Stills. He's gone over 100 yards in three games this year. Kenny Stills has legitimate blow the top off the coverage speed. He can get past you. Well, we talk so much about Ryan Broyles. Kenny Stills, actually, his freshman year, a year ago, he broke all of Ryan Broyles' freshman receiving records. Yeah. And Broyles is, you know, the all-time greatest statistical receiver in NCAA history. And it is a first down after that run by Roy Finch. And Ryan Broyles meant so much to this team in a lot of different fronts and a lot to these, to these young receivers in teaching them how to practice, how to play the game, how to run your routes, how to prepare, all those type of things. They've all benefited from Broyles. And he's still doing it. He's helping coach up the receivers during practice. He's out with a torn ACL. That was suffered in their last game against Texas A&M. Jones now quickly over the middle. It was batted away. And Elliott Coffey got his hand up in the way of that passing lane. Elliot Coffey, son of Ken Coffey, the old uh, Washington Redskin, moved, he was a DB, they moved him into linebacker, had a heck of a game a week ago. All over the field, had a bunch of tackles. Had a couple interceptions against Kansas as well, was Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Second and 10 now for Jones. And wide open that time is Reynolds. And look at Reynolds go, crossing midfield inside the 45 before he was finally taken down by Sam Hall. The whole key to this is, first of all, he has the time to throw. And then you just sit down. And that's one of those things that Ryan Burles is teaching the young receiver. Sitting down in the holes in his own. 30-yard reception. Now Stills fights ahead to the 42-yard line where he was tackled by Mike Hicks. We talk about Oklahoma, we talk about the players, and that's one part of defending them. The other part, Joe, is defending the pace. And they will give you a bunch of different pace. Now, something I want to talk to you more about, Matt, because there's a difference between 
defending tempo or pace compared to defending a scheme. Oh, it's not even close. Second and eight now. Jones looks to the far side, and he finds Reynolds again. So we're starting to see how Reynolds can be that guy who does step up. Yeah, and they're on the same page. And, and when you're defending pace, you have got to be defensively disciplined. You need to be well conditioned because they're going to wear you out. And then along with that, you have to have depth. And here's Ryan. Well, look at this. They're right up and ready to go. Great All example those things of that pace. And coming up and making a fine defensive play that time was Ahmad Dixon. And so if you're Phil Bennett, the defensive coordinator for the Baylor Bears, the main thing you have to be able to do is get everybody lined up properly. That's the first thing. A lot of times when they go quick pace, you have guys not knowing what to do. They're standing around, and then they take advantage of it. A rare moment of seeing that play clock go down towards 10 seconds here. Second and 13. Little pressure up the middle, and Jones just throws it off out of bounds. So it'll bring up a third and 13. That was Rodney Chadwick who came untouched. And a nice job by Phil Bennett, their defensive coordinator. So they curve you off inside, and they bring Chadwick 26 blowing right up the middle. He had the free shot, and that's the one area that Landry Jones does not like to see pressure is right in his face. Need to get this ball to the 17 yard line. Third and 13. Jones steps up, flag is down as wide open. Walking into the end zone was Camille Jackson, but we will check on the flag. Personal foul, chop block. Number 22, offense, 15 yard penalty, third down. Now it's Roy Finch trying to help out in pass protection. Yeah, once a man is engaged, you can't from the second level, you can't get him. You're going to watch Roy Finch. Does a, he's engaged inside. I'll see there's two. He, actually, he started at first, but Eichert, the center, he comes across and they get it. So with that, the ball is moved back and placed all the way at the 44, making for a third. And 28. Three by one receivers with Finch in the backfield with Jones. They only bring three this time. Ball is up in the air. And it falls incomplete. As Camille Jackson, the Oklahoma receiver, was in the middle of all those Baylor defensive backs. And Mike Hicks was the one. That got in the mix to cause this deflection. Well, Joe, you mentioned it. You see, there's only three rushers, and they have actually had decent pressure, which means there are eight guys against five down the field. And so you can kind of try to flood the zone and take advantage of it, but you have enough men defensively to be able to fill the voids. Dress way on to punt for the Sooners, and Levi Norwood, the return man for Baylor. Left-footed boot by Tressway. And that sails out of the end zone. Scoreless here in Waco between number five and number 22. Stay with us. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. And Chevrolet. And their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. No score here at Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas. Oklahoma in the top five of the BCS standings for a record 48th time. You can see one of the things that Oklahoma wanted to do was get hits on Robert Griffin early. And they were able to do it in that first series of play. They knocked him down a bunch of times. And so if you now are Baylor, there's one thing that they have in their back pocket, and it's on the bottom of his feet, his shoes. That guy start using his feet, oh, yeah. start taking off and run. That messes up all your defensive scheme. Blazing speed with Robert Griffin III. Frank Alexander, a big part of that pass rush for Oklahoma.
Play action. Griffin pressure again and taken down by Alexander. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. EA? Well, guys, you're talking about this pressure that the Sooners are getting on RG3. Guess what the two words are that Art Bryles is screaming to his team right now, particularly his O-line. Protect and poise. Pressure, protect, poise. Nice alliteration, guys. Keeping you on your toes. Nice. You need a little bit more alliteration there, Aaron. What we need, they need the protection. They need the poise. And then they need to get on their horse and move him. He can't keep him on point. Because if they're keeping him in one spot, that's an easy place to find him. Use the mobility that he has and start to move him in that pocket. Five tackles for loss for Oklahoma now. Second and 17 after the sack. And that is incomplete as he threw it to the outside looking for Levi Norwood. We've talked about Baylor offensively. And they'd like to be able to establish a run game. I think Oklahoma established early that you're not going to be able to get outside. You're not going to make a living running inside. They, this offensive line of Baylor is not a real power group. It's going to fall back on the shoulders of Robert Griffin. And they knew that coming into it. As it has so many times exactly. in the course of the last two years. Number two in the nation in total offense. Third and 17. That was dangerous. Throwing against the grain and almost into the hands of Travis Lewis. And he's starting to feel pressure off that left side. That's Frank Alexander. Alexander, now he's getting blocked up this time by Cyril Richardson, but he feels it. And he starts to move, and you're right, throwing back across. That should have been a pick. But a nice job by Kendall right at the end to turn in the transition game and be a defender. So Roth on to punt again as he is straddling his goal line and Kenny Stills will provide good field position for Oklahoma. He's at midfield right now. Stills from the 44. And he goes down at about the 47. So they've been coming after that guy. Robert Griffin III, Oklahoma on offense when we return. How about we tell you what's coming up on ESPN's Monday Night Football this week. You got Tom Brady and the AFC East leading New England Patriots hosting the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs Patriots, ESPN's Monday Night Football, 8.30 Eastern and coverage begins at 7 Eastern with Monday Night Countdown served by Applebee's. Landry Jones in that Oklahoma offense. Seen the fast pace plenty so far, but we haven't seen a score. And this is James Hanna, his tight end, tiptoeing the sideline. Oklahoma has a lot of different ways to beat you. They can beat you with the wide receivers. They can beat you when you're locked up in man coverage, like you had right there with, uh, with Hanna, uh, the tight end. Hanna can go. He had a 76-yarder against Oak State last year. Here's Roy Finch, and nothing doing that time as K.J. Morton came up from that corner spot. Josh Heupel, their offensive coordinator, knew that he was going to have to fill the void. We talked about that with Ryan Royals, but he also knew that he had a lot of weapons that they haven't even used yet, Joe. This is a, this is a pretty deep and talented roster that Oklahoma brings. We've already seen Jazz Reynolds, number 16 there. Now Finch coming out of the backfield. They swing it to Finch. And he scoots out just short of the 30. It was Ahmad Dixon who gave a little extra. Oklahoma's offense, number one in protecting Mr. Jones. 0.44 of sacks allowed. Third and eight to the far side. And Reynolds, did he juggle that? He juggled it. So incomplete as he could not secure the ball before going out of bounds. This is the inconsistency part that we've talked about with Jazz Reynolds. He's got big hands. He just got to lock that thing down right away. These things are the size of dinner plates, Matt. Yeah, they really are, Giuseppe. But he needed to hold on. That's Michael good call. Honeycutt. Oh, come on to attempt a 47-yarder. He does have a career long of 53. Redshirt freshman has started the last six games and has done very well. And you 
see the big leg of Honeycutt. So Oklahoma gets on the board first. Three zip Sooners. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Aaron Andrews with you in Waco. Three zip Sooners. Antoine Goodley on the return now. And Goodley taken down at the 24. Gives us a chance to check in with Robert Flores in the studio. All right, Joe Taco Bell studio update. One week after beating Stanford, Oregon now trailing early to USC. Right after the Ducks fumbled, Matt Barkley up top to Marquise Lee. And USC is leading the Oregon Ducks right now 7-0. LSU all over Ole Miss 35-3 at the half. Joe and Matt. Thanks, Robert. That Marquise Lee, the young wide receiver at USC, is going to be something special. And Robert Woods not 100% this week, Matt, but Marquise Lee, very talented. Not a bad guy to have thrown it to him either. Barkley, tremendous pro prospect. And right here, Robert Griffin is able to connect with Kendall Wright. And speaking about receivers, receivers, Kendall Wright is a guy I think who kind of flies under the radar. He's got really good short area quickness. He can run extremely well. He's, that's a good football player. And now they go with the screen to Reese. And Reese has it for a first down. You talk about Kendall Wright. Bob Stoop said, heck, we recruited this guy hard. We wanted him. Oklahoma was in the hunt for him. And it's easy to see why. I mean, he's a thick guy. He's got some run after the catch skills. He's just a talented player. First down at the 36 for Baylor. Right, a semifinalist for the Bolitnikoff Award. So finally getting some respect nationally. And away. Chugs ahead to the 40-yard line. Gave Javon Harris a bit of a ride there. Brent Venables keeps on bringing pressure. Now they had a run blitz right inside. They caught him, ran right into it. And now Terrence Williams at midfield. And Williams puts on a move and stiff arms his way to the 40-yard line. That was Jamel Fleming caught out there on an island. Yeah, because he didn't get lined up quick. A little bit of medicine right back at you. What the Oklahoma offense does, they're doing the same thing now. How about this tempo? Quick handoff this time. Should have been a flag. Not oh. everybody was set, Matt. And, and Oklahoma didn't get off the field in time, and they were on the Baylor side. And the penalty does come in late. Illegal substitution defense, 12 men on the field is a snap. Five yard penalty, replay first down. Yeah, well, they did see it, and they saw it down here. The official down here sees it, but you can see here, and here's another one. They don't get off the field in time just too many men and a nice job of running pace now you have to defend pace as well both teams do a good job and look at Ganaway spinning his way inside the 30 and another flag comes in from the defensive backfield that's going to be on Tom Ward and that's going to be a horse collar I'm not a big fan of this uh, if it is a horse collar I'm not a big fan of it it's a face mask I am a fan of it personal foul face mask defense number six <laughs> Half the business for the goal from the end of the run, automatic first down. And you can see Ward defending, that's nice. Face and hands, yeah, he gets he gets all that face mask too. That's a great call. He had a whole chunk of steel that time on Terrence Ganaway. So the ball is placed at the 14-yard line. Baylor is in prime position to strike here. Salubi now. Salubi trying to get to that edge. And he is forced out at about the 13. It was Frank Alexander who was tracking Salubi every step of the way. Salubi gets the run, but the guy who made the whole thing happen was Robert Griffin, as we have a guy down, Tom Wart. Remember, he's, he's nursing an ankle. Wart was coming off a bad ankle. He was able to practice this week, so he stayed with the starting assignment. I like this kid. I liked Tom him. Ward. I liked him a year ago, and I think he's gotten better. He's gotten a little bigger. He's around about 230 pounds now, but he gets it. He understands how to play that inside position. He'll strike you with your his face and hands, and he controls people. He can run. Looks like a little bit of 
little bit of a blowout there. Number 21 coming off the edge down here. You can see him. He's got a redirect. And what really got him was Robert Griffin and his ability to read that mesh point. So Jaden Bird comes in for the Oklahoma defense in place of Tom Ward. Second down and nine at the 13 yard line. And there is Bird, the junior linebacker. Designed quarterback run with Griffin the third. And not much running room at all, only able to get to the 11 yard line. Interestingly, when he runs, he has better runner's patience than he does thrower's patience. Because his ability to take off and run when he's in the pocket to throw, he'll pull it down a little quicker because he has the ability to take off. But when he's a runner, he has excellent runner's patience. Such confidence in his ability to accelerate. Kendall right now in the backfield with Griffin as we had all kinds of motion. Ball start, offense. Number 71, five yard penalty, third down. So Art Bryles will see his offense backed up five more. Art Bryles has done it the hard way. He came up all the way from high school, all the way through. He knows this offense inside and out. His offensive coordinator, Phil Montgomery, and him are on the same page. When they call a game, they're calling it together. And a longtime high school coaching legend in Texas, highlighted by his time at Stephenville High School back in the late 80s through the 90s before he went on to Texas Tech and then Houston as a head coach. And now here, success at Baylor. Third and 12. And once again, motion looked like it came from the right side of the line. Ball start. Offense, number 79, five-yard penalty, third down. And 79 is Robert T. Griffin. They call him, jokingly, RG2. <laughs> you got RG3, and there's RG2. And, and he's my, huge. He and goes 6'6", 335. Exactly. It looked like he might be two of RG3. Right. <laughs> That's right. probably why they mean it. He's a big man. Let's bring in Aaron Andrews. Aaron, what do you have Coach for us? Coach Bryles giving the official an earful, saying he called timeout before they threw that flag. And, uh, you know, he's saying to the official, that's your job. You're supposed to hear that. I think the official's saying he didn't. Well, well, right there. Third and 17. And Griffin, not much room at all, taken down at the 17-yard line by Jaden Bird and David King. When push comes to shove, they're going to trust the guy who's probably the best runner, and that's and that's their quarterback. Look, they're going to take the three points, and they're going to tie this thing up. Aaron Jones on for the 34-yard attempt. He's been struggling a bit with his accuracy. Just five of 11 this year. And he ties the game. 3-3 for our Bryle squad. Last week, boy, they had to dig themselves out of a hole against Kansas. Baylor rallied from a 21-point deficit in the fourth quarter. Tevin Reese, a 65-yard touchdown, would tie the game and force overtime at 24-24. In overtime, Griffin III connected with Reese again, a 14-yard score. They were up 31-24. Kansas scored, but then they went for two. And they came up short, so Baylor won it against Kansas, a team that has struggled mightily this year. There are a lot of people when that score was being put up around the country last week, Matt, was shaking their heads saying, Baylor is in that big of a hole against Kansas? They pulled it out. Yeah, and I, I was one of them. We were keeping our eye on that thing. And you knew that Baylor had the ability to be able to explode at any time. It didn't happen for the longest time. And then Griffin got hot. Griffin tonight is five for nine for 60 yards. Hasn't been able to generate much offense on the ground. 
Trey Franks now returning the short kickoff. And Franks is cut down just beyond the 25. Well, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. Coverage begins at 2 Eastern on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa. Matt, did you see the chatter between Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart? I love to see that. These guys were just talking it up as they're separated by just three points going into this final race. I mean, this thing looked like a heavyweight fight weigh-in the other day with these two guys jawing at each other. We'll see what they bring to the track tomorrow. Brandon Williams now, the featured lone back in the offense. Jones avoids the pressure, steps up, and then that ball is batted away by Mike Hicks. We talked about Mike Hicks to stop as one of our in, in, a top rather, one of our impact players. We got to be impressed right now. John Baptiste gets a little pressure inside, but Phil Bennett. He's been mixing up his stuff. He's brought pressure. He's gone a little bit more man. I had not seen that a lot. I went back even to last year's tape to watch it. He's mixing things up on Landry Jones. Of course, Bennett, a well-traveled, long-time defensive guru. Second and 10 now. Over the middle, and that is incomplete. And it was good, hard defense by Sam Hall to come in against James Hanna. Good anticipation. That time, they dial up just a pure zone. Hall's going to be sitting back and you are watching the quarterback's eyes. And when he eyeballs it and sees it, there's, and there's Phil right there. Phil you think Bennett. Bennett's working up a sweat tonight, Matt? <laughs> That's the way he is. Jones looks over the sideline. Third and 10. The crowd ready to roar in support of this defense. They only bring three. Jones takes a strike, and it's right on the hands of Kenny Stills for a first down. Remember we said he could make all the throws, and he's accurate. And here's the perfect example. This is a small, tight window. Got to be right there. Stills finds the opening. Jones finds Stills. 26-yard reception on that third down. Fly sweep this time with Trey Franks, and Franks gets to the outside and then tumbles. The ball came out at the very end, and it is Baylor's ball. They upended Trey Franks, and he lost the ball. Joe Williams got in after it. Williams cut him down and watched the end of this play. And he doesn't put his head on it, Joe. He puts his body on it. Looks like Jazz Reynolds had a chance to be able to get it, but strange things happen on the bottom of piles. Trust me on that one. Look at that hit by Joe Williams that sent Franks into a 360 and unable to hold on to the ball. You play for turnovers, you can't game plan them. And when the opportunity is there, you got to get on top of it. Baylor did. Delayed handoff now by Ganaway, and he's going to lose a bit of yardage. But that Baylor defense able to stop the Sooners thanks to Joe Williams. He's the guy that saved the day last week at Kansas, breaking up that two-point conversion attempt by the Jayhawks that we showed you moments ago. And he put on that big hit against Trey Franks. 3-3 game here between number five and number 22. Just a short amount of yards. And that was Ron L. Lewis who came all the way around to find Robert Griffin III. Makes for a second and six. Plenty of time and launches it for Wright. But well overthrown as Wright was also well covered by Demontre Hurst and Aaron Colvin. That Colvin kid makes up a lot of ground. Hurst was right on top of him. They knew that Wright could get on top of him. He could, he could get deep. And so Hurst stayed on top of it. But that Colvin, Colvin is 
I think that's a very good player. He He's, can play corner. He can play yes. safety. He has very good range, good good speed, good movement. Sees the field well. Folks rave about his instincts. Third and six now. And here's where Griffin can be dangerous, but he's taken down from behind. And boy, for a moment that had the look of a horse collar tackle. Where yeah, Tom did. Wart wrote him down. And that's the part where Wart separates himself from other players. He can run you down. And that looks like it should have been probably called. It's always dangerous if the legs don't give out on a tackle like that and they get bent back. Fortunately for Griffin, quick to get up. Makes for a fourth down, and that sends Spencer Roth back out to punt. Kenny Stills he came into this game with only two career punt returns. It's his first game as the starting punt returner for the Sooners. And he feels it inside the 10, and he is taken down right at the 11-yard line. And they do call that one, Matt. That was a tough one. That you know, ironically, we're talking about a horse collar here, and that's Mike Hicks, the safety we talked about at the top of the game. The guy who that whole rule came from was at Oklahoma, Roy Williams, the safety. Personal foul, horse collar tackle, number 17, 15 yard penalty, first down. We'll take a break. 3 3. A look at that 15 yarder on Hicks. on ABC. Time for tonight's Aflac trivia question. Thank you, Duck. Oklahoma 20 and 0 all time versus Baylor. We told you about that mighty mark. Who are the other two BCS AQ schools, Matt, with a perfect record against a current conference opponent? So there's two other schools out there that have the perfect mark against conference opponents as well. First down for the Sooners, and Finch tries to spin free, but is taken down at the line of scrimmage. Aaron. Hey, Taz, after uh, Trey Franks was upended and Baylor was able to recover that ball, I'm not going to say the Sooners' offense was tight, but I will tell you that all the coaches were yelling a lot of fundamentals to them, like hustle, get to the ball, protect the ball. Even Bob Stoops came over to say, come on, guys, fight. I need you to be competitive. Yeah, I mean, this is not the norm. It's three points on the board here in the second quarter. They're fourth in the nation total offense nationally, but slowed a bit tonight as Finch is only able to get a couple of yards out of the backfield. Yeah, but Joe, remember when we were talking to the coaches of the Baylor Bears, what they said they had to do is they had to get themselves a good start. And they wanted to start faster offensively, but hey, defensively, they picked it up. And so now you're 3-3 in the second quarter. That constitutes a good start. They can pick it up from here. Here's an even bigger opportunity for that Baylor defense. And that guy, coordinator Phil Bennett, who's working up a sweat just putting in the plays against this Sooners offense. Third and seven. Jones, plenty of time, and then finds his man over the middle. That was Camille Jackson for the first down. You know, there's a sense that a quarterback has no, number one is the time, and then second, where are you on the field to be able to let go of that ball? He took it right to the line of scrimmage and had great sense of where he was to make that throw. He was very close to that line, but knew enough to get rid of it and find Jackson. So a first down for the Sooners at the 43. And the whistle comes in. It's like motion there. Ball start. Offense. Number 59. Five yard penalty. First down. Six penalties for 69 yards tonight against Oklahoma.
They keep it with Finch, and Finch just to the 43. Here's Robert Flores. Hey, Joe, for the first time all season, Oregon has not scored in the first quarter. They're down 14-0. Matt Barkley, two touchdown passes. This one to Robert Woods, and USC up 14-0 in Eugene. Joe. How about Monty Kiffin's defense, Matt? Yeah, that, when they're on and they can start to dictate some things, he's really tough. So Oklahoma fans with great interest in the possibility of Oregon catching a loss. They're currently right in front of them in the BCS standings. Here's Finch, and he is out to midfield where it will make for a third and about three. Third and manageable, and that's what Oklahoma has been able to stay in. And that's a, this is a tough down, a, a tough uh, distance right here to be able to defend. Will Bennett is going to have to, every now and then he's going to have to roll the dice and go with some man coverage. To pass on third down. And it is complete for a first down as he finds the backup tight end, Trent Rattery. Rattery can make the catch because he finds the hole in the zone. You find the hole because you have time. You have time because your offensive line protected you very well. It's a winning formula for Landry Jones there. Brennan Flay now comes in, a sophomore running back who's been dealing with injuries throughout the year. And Flay gets the call, and he is met right away by Ahmad Dixon. And it was Dixon who had that fumble recovery earlier for Baylor. Yeah, you can see Dixon right here on your screen, right in front, number six. And he's just going down and expecting that there will be no movement on the inside because defensively you forced him back to the outside. And Karon Johnson is down for the Bears. Here he's their most explosive defensive lineman. Guy who uh, actually played offense, was a fullback at one point in his career. They need the size he has, and he has good inside quickness. You know, a week ago, when you watch this defense for Baylor, they did not play well at all. Jean-Baptiste, number 90, who's in there right now, is a big man who a year ago played very well next to Phil Taylor, who was the number one pick. He had not been playing well at all. Yeah, and, and, and Phil Bennett didn't mince words. He said, listen, if he doesn't play better, he's not playing. <laughs> and he, and they, they didn't start him. He's forced into action now, obviously, with the injury to Johnson. Second and eight. Pistol look now with Jones and Clay behind him, and they go with Brennan Clay, and he is wrapped up right away. A good tackle that time by Sam Hall. Spare your defense. They're playing pretty good. Yeah, they're fired up tonight. They Matt. really are. Not a hesitation. Here's another third down. Now, Oklahoma has been good on third downs here tonight. Baylor has to win this down. They've got to get off the field right here. Line to make is the 23 on third and six for Landry Jones. Pumps one way and then is swallowed up. And it was Nicholas Jean Baptiste. Phil Bennett lit a fire underneath him. Guess what? He's playing better. Yeah, he came off the ball with power first into the guard and then converted power and used a little bit of a burst. You're going to watch him right inside. Watch the power into the guard and then he comes off of it. That's well done. Just when they needed it most. So backed up now past the 35, Oklahoma to punt. Tress Way on, and Levi Norwood just setting his heels on the 10. As Way will try to pin them here. And it does take a Sooners bounce, and then he decides to field it. Very dangerous just picking that out of midair. Fortunately for Baylor, he's able to secure that ball. More when we return. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com.
the 2012 Ford F-150 with available EcoBoost. Visit Ford.com slash Big Score to learn more. And Wendy's Asiago Ranch Chicken Club. That is the Texas Ranger Hall of Fame and Museum here in Waco, Texas, dedicated to the history and the popular culture of the legendary Texas Rangers. Good looking display they had there. Lone Ranger is a Texas Ranger. Who else was a, was a Texas Ranger? Oh, I think, well, got some law enforcement here protecting folks down there on the sideline. You know, Robert Griffin could use a silver bullet here against this Oklahoma defense. They've been keeping him in check in the running game at least. And now they bring pressure, and it's a quick strike this time to Kendall Wright. He has a blocker out in front, past midfield, and there goes Kendall Wright, still on his feet, all the way inside the 30. Big play by Kendall Wright. Yes, that's half of it. The other half is Robert Griffin. This is an outstanding job by Griffin. He saw everything coming. And then he got a nice block by Sampson, number three, down the field. And Wright shows not only his speed, but his strength as a runner. You see how fast Kendall Wright is. And Oklahoma now dealing with an injury and a key member of their defensive front. That is Ronnell Lewis. He's a guy who is just a physical freak of a defensive end. Has the speed to chase anyone down. It's five and a half sacks on the year. Uh, the medical staff is tending to Lewis. We will take a break. 3-3 game with Baylor on the move. It's a big loss for the Oklahoma defense as Ronald Lewis has made his way over to the sideline with the help of the training staff. Now you look at the numbers and how productive he has been. That came in the midst of Kendall Wright's 55-yard reception as he set Baylor's season receiving record 1149 yards for the senior Kendall Wright Danaway big hole up the middle and a first down for the Bears inside the 15 he was finally tackled by Travis Lewis they're going to motion out. You're going to see them widen. That means they're in man coverage. And then Ganaway just, it takes advantage of the nice block on the inside. Here's Ganaway again, straight up the middle and into the end zone. Touchdown, Baylor. Big Griffin inside there. Blake's in there. Caulfold's in there. They did a nice job on the interior. Here comes Caulfield around on the trap. And then Blake gets up on Wart. And it's just assignment football, man on man, hat on hat. What other cliche can I throw in there? Touchdown. That was a very good looking drive by Baylor. All sparked by the 55 yard catch and run by Kendall Wright. And then the power game of the 240 pound Terrence Ganaway. Look at the Southwest Airline playbook. And it was that sprint down the near sideline by Kendall Wright. You know, it's, it's going to be man to man outside. And so they're going to bring, you can see they're going to bring five guys down inside here. They go three, it looks like it's going to be three on three up top. Here comes your six, actually. And right here is the key. He has got to jump the coverage early. They come to pressure. And a great decision by Griffin. And because he's dropping down on that, you missed the tackle on the angle. You have to be right on your angle. And then Wright takes it at the rest of the way. Matt, we spent so much time talking about this Baylor offense and how they have ability to quick strike. That was the 15th scoring drive under a minute this season. They do that well. And really what it is, it's a little bit of medicine right back to Oklahoma because they're the same type. And that's what they're going to have to have right now on this set of downs. Trey Franks on the return. And Franks caught a seam. He's able to get it past the 25. Tomorrow night on ABC, don't miss the American Music Awards. The one place to see all your favorite artists with performances by Katy Perry, 
and Jennifer Lopez. It's music's biggest night, the American Music Awards, live tomorrow night at 8, 7 Central on ABC. Now time to huddle the troops on one side and for Phil Bennett and that defense to fire off again on the other. Oklahoma trailing by seven. Finch, good block out in front and untouched until he was already past the 10 yard mark and finally ridden down by Sam Hall. Two things when you're running outside. One, you have to gain the edge, which they do right there with Eichert. Nice block. And then two, it has to be defended. Well, they didn't do a very good job of it. They were able to get to the edge. Stevenson, the left tackle, did a nice job coming down. They pulled inside out and were able to capture that edge. Stevenson was so far downfield, he was looking for somebody to find <laughs> it. He was trying to find somebody to block. First down, play action now for Jones. And he gets it complete for an eight-yard gain to Jazz Reynolds. Well, I really like what I see out of Jazz Reynolds. Yeah, I, I just think there's a, a sky's the limit for this kid. You're just looking for a little bit more consistency. You know, when he he can do it, he, he has good hands, but he doesn't always pluck the ball as we saw on the sidelines. Once he starts doing that consistently, he'll be there. Young man who really matured this past year. He was suspended last year before the Texas game for some immature comments on Twitter. Here's Finch, and Finch with a really good looking juke move. As Sam Hall came up empty with the missed tackles, Finch picks up the first down. They've had a lot of great running backs here at Oklahoma, and all the great ones have been able to do what Roy Finch just did right there. I think back to Greg Pruitt and you know, uh, Joe Washington, guys like that. He has a little bit of Joe Washington. I say it every time we have them. But that little bit right in there where you can just do that jump cut, he's got it. Now they go with the inside handoff, and that is Trey Millard. Millard goes 249, plays the fullback position, but they'll give him the ball and give him touches in spots like that. He was one of the players they were most excited about in the 2010 recruiting class. Yeah, it's a 250-pound guy. He's got good speed. He can make you miss. He can be a tight end if you want him to be. He's a fullback if you need him to be. He can handle the ball deep in the backfield. Very 61-yard touchdown run yeah. against K-State. He can motor. Second and seven. They get blockers out in front for Stills, and he gets the corner and goes down the sideline before he is eventually forced out by Ahmad Dixon. Giuseppe, who did they? Who did he follow? Trey Miller. Trey Miller. Yeah. He had the big fullback out in front. This is what he can do. This is just short motion coming from inside out. Now gain the edge and watch how he takes the first one into the second one and allows for that big play down the left sideline. Boy, Miller did a great job of sealing that edge, too, along with James Hanna, the tight end, out in front. See how dangerous Stills can be. And they set him up for spots like that. First and 10 now at the 21. Oh, that was a misconnection. They were coming with the fly sweep, and it was supposed to be the inside handoff to Finch, but instead Jones had to keep it himself. This is where they have not necessarily been very good in this red zone area. You can see here comes the sweep. They're going to fake that, and then Finch is supposed to get it. I think Stills need to be a little further along because he was actually almost in the way of what would have been the handoff. The, and the mesh wasn't quite exactly. there. Exactly. The timing was just off a bit as those trains almost collided. See the red zone numbers for Oklahoma. Makes for a second and 11 now. Pressure off the edge from Baylor, and what a play that time by Ahmad Dixon. He came in, took a couple steps, went airborne, and just rejected that effort. You're going to watch number six. He's right out here. Dixon's going to come, and here's the great presence to be able to get up and time it perfectly, Joe. That's a big time play by Dixon. And a big third down here. Third and 11. Crowd knows it. Getting loud here in Waco.
Jones has plenty of time, and he gets it complete right at that marker to James Hanna. We'll see where the spot is. He only rushed four. Oklahoma had great protection, was able to see the whole field. It's going to be a fourth down, though, Joe. They're marking him Here just comes short. Here comes the bell dozer. That is Blake Bell. Blake Bell is their six foot six, 245 pound redshirt freshman quarterback who has 12 carries on the year for either a first down or a touchdown. Now facing a fourth and short. They call him the bell dozer. Timeout by Phil Bennett on the sideline of Baylor Bears. Now Bennett wants to talk things over. It'll be a fourth and short for the Sooners when we return. Two hundred and forty five pound quarterback Blake Bell. He has his own package. They call it the bell dozer and he's in here on fourth and short to try to convert for the Sooners. He was cut down but possibly the second surge got it for them. It was Johnson, K. Ron Johnson, who initially came through, but Bell's second effort Ooh, will this, be marked ahead of that. This is going to be close. And they will measure. Johnson did a good job of getting in against Bell, but then Bell took that one last leap forward, so the chain gang comes on. First down Oklahoma. That's all on the belldozer. And it wasn't with the belldozer like power. It was his ability at the end to redirect. There, there's there you see that the the uh, the push forward. And then he's able to make the cut and go that that's really well done by Blake Bell. So now 21 carries for Bell and 13 have ever been for a first down or a touchdown. So a first down just outside the 10, so it's not first and goal. Here's Finch inside the five. Good, hard-charging run by a 5'7", 160-pounder. You can see the maturity in Roy Finch, and you can see that he's picked up his game. Yes, he has that ability to make the jump cuts and all the little movement inside his great feet, but also, as you saw right there, he can be definitive and just come straight up the field hard. Not the kind of guy you think of as a workhorse carry the load because of his body, but they really rely on him with Dominique Whaley out for the year. Second down now from the four, and Bell comes back in. And that time he was looking to give to Miller, but a timeout was called. And as you see, Bob Stoops just shaking his head, and with that, it gives us an opportunity to go back and recount our Aflac trivia question. Matt, we asked folks. Aflac! Oklahoma's 20 0 all time against Baylor. Baylor's never had a win against them. Well, who are the other two BCS AQ schools with a perfect record against a current conference opponent? I know one of them is, got? is my alma mater because. That's right. And, and I, I, I couldn't tell you the other one. Well, Penn State 15 and 0 against Indiana. And, I mean, the answer really comes in thinking about who's been consistently bad and then who's been good in the conference. Yeah. Well, so Duke and Florida State, the long run of 15 and 0, the Seminoles over the Blue Devils. But you're right, your alma mater, Penn State, 15 and 0 all time sounds, against the Hoosiers. Sounds kind of weird to say that Penn State got a win today. Tom Bradley is the head coach. Congratulations, Tom Bradley. Well, things are really tough up there and he's able to get that team focused. That's the credit to his coaching and also to his team to be able to focus on what they had to do. Blake Bell stays in. Millard is in the backfield with him on second and a long two. Little delay play and Bell powers his way into the end zone. Mike Hicks was on the receiving end of the Bell Dozer. <laughs> it was the Bell Dozer. And what he did was had some good patience, Giuseppe. 
Watch this. He's going to take the delay, let your people get in front of him, and now pick your spot. Lower your shoulder when you have to. But he's just following old Ripkowski. Good block up front. Well done by Ripkowski. You had a 255-pound fullback in Ripkowski leading the way for a 245-pound quarterback in Blake Bell. And with that effort, got ourselves a tie game, 10-10. And as we were preparing all week long for this, we were thinking, okay, explosive offense. As you right. know, the quick pace of Oklahoma, you know what they're going to do. If I told you Baylor was going to be right in this game, you wouldn't think 10-10 with some sound defensive efforts. No, what you would have thought was that, the, that Robert Griffin III was having a big night right. and that he was either running, beating you with your feet, or making some nice throws. And both those things are here, but it's been the defense. And I think Phil Bennett's defense, he's rolled the dice a few times. They've played physical up front. And I think that has really kept them in this game in this first half. Yeah, they played uh, inspired football. And then Oklahoma here on this last drive coming down, grinding out that fourth down with Bell and then getting things done down at the goal line. But Griffin, you always have the sense that at any point he can have the explosive play. He had the big play, the 55-yarder to Kendall Wright. They scored on that drive in just under a minute. And he's one of the most dynamic playmakers in all of college football. Oklahoma, number five in the country. Trying to stay alive for position in the BCS title game. This is a short kick. It's fielded by Goodley. And he dives ahead, crossing the 30. Well, that last drive, Joe, it was all about Robert Griffin to start. Kendall Wright with the big play, gets a little help from his friend down the field. But that was the big one at 55 yards. And then the running game, Gataway just powered up inside for a big first down and then finished it off. So big play and then quick strike with the inside power game. Worked with them the last time see what they come back with. And Matt, I think you'd agree that one of the best things they could do in terms of keeping the pressure off RG3 is that power running game yeah. with Ganaway. Which didn't exist at the start of this game. They couldn't run a lick. So back to business is Griffin. He's going to launch it downfield looking for Reese and he's wide open. What did we say about quick strike? How about that? Giuseppe, it was play action. That's part of it. But the route that was run was just beautiful. It doesn't get much better than that. 69-yard touchdown reception to Tevin Reese. And you can see how upset Bob Stoops is as Baylor instantly returns after Oklahoma had just punched it in. Let's just take a nice look at this touchdown on what they do with they're going to go play action but Tevin Reese uses anticipation defensively against the defense. You're going to watch the play action inside here. Tevin Reese is on the outside seemingly going to cross you wait and then he starts to anticipate him going this way and then it's back up the field and what a beautiful throw by Griffin. There's the fake there's the bite now here's the transition. See how the safety is biting down inside, anticipating a crossing route. Well, they use the anticipation against you. That's really, really well done. And Matt, this speaks to what we talked about at the beginning of the night, of the more mature and polished and comfortable quarterback play of Robert Griffin as his career has moved on. Yeah, you can see it. Man. We, we talked about it at the top of the show. We said you could see it from the beginning of the season to now he's gotten better, and he has. He brings this place alive. A touchdown lead again. Trey Franks. And Trey Franks with a good return for Oklahoma. Fighting his way. Still going all the way out to the 45-yard line. Coming up at the half, stay tuned. And join John Anderson, Jesse Palmer, and the Capital One Halftime Report for all the scores and highlights from today's college football action. It has been a wildly entertaining 
couple days of college football of course the talk about with what happened last night Oklahoma State maybe the upset of the year losing at Iowa State USC giving Oregon all they can handle tonight and Bob Stoops demanding better from Mr. Harris on the sideline hoping that they can stay alive and be in that argument of the great debate of who's the best one loss team as we close in on the end of this season. And another flag. Looked like motion up front. Ball start. Offense. Number 69. Five yard penalty. First down. Von Harris getting a little earful on the sideline. I've been there before. I understand. I know that route. That's a tough route to defend because you want to jump it and you want to stay on the top shoulder and in your anticipation they get you and the only thing you could do is run for your life and it was too late chasing Tevin Reese 69 yard touchdown inside handoff this time as Finch just scoots to the outside Darryl Baylor was able to contain things a bit hey, in this game Sometimes you get him, and sometimes you get got. He got got that time. And now Javon Harris is getting an earful. He'll make a play. Second and 15. Remember, Baylor has never defeated Oklahoma. Ball was tipped and then caught, and then spinning free as Jackson. Individual effort there. He is down there. Just beyond midfield. Daniel Jackson, one of those guys playing a larger role with the absence of Ryan Broyles, who's out for the year with a torn ACL. The NCAA all time leader in career receptions is Ryan Broyles. Third and five. Daniel Jackson, just another one of those talented freshmen. That he's playing on that offense. And Bob Stoops is going to use a timeout here with just a minute five left in the half and facing a third and five. And that gives us a chance to look at the BCS standings. You know, just when we thought, Matt, that everything was so simple and there was a clear path, complete and utter chaos, and it started up in, I in Ames, Iowa. It started in Ames, Iowa last night, and there's still more going on with Oregon right there, trailing 21-7. We have another humdinger going on here with Oklahoma, and Oklahoma, like Aaron Andrews told us at the start when he's talking to Coach Stoops, they look, everything's in front of them. All you have to do is just keep winning. A lot of things can happen. Well, one of the things that can happen is if you don't play well, this Baylor team can put it on you in a hurry like we just saw. Then they have that Iowa State team next week before Bedlam at Oklahoma State on December 3rd. Here's your third and five. Jones going to try to do it on his own, and he comes up well short that time. It was Elliot Coffey who came up to meet Landry Jones. Coffee ends up making the tackle. The play was made by the secondary. And they're going to go for it here on fourth down. That secondary had excellent coverage and forced him to pull that ball down. See Phil Bennett preparing his defense for fourth down here. Half a minute to go in the half. Play clock running down, game clock running down. And they're giving the look of going for it. But they're just going to let that thing burn. And leave 20 seconds and use a timeout. You have fourth down and short. What you have to be able to do is you don't really have a quarterback. Oh, they're going to punt now. If they were going to go for it, he's not a guy who really gives you that second option. So you have to put the option in somebody else's hand. But he took it away from him. He's going to punt and live for the second half. Bell's the guy that they've used in those short yardage situations. So 
Bob Stoops makes the decision here to kick it away and likely go into the locker room trailing number 22 by a touchdown. Giuseppe Gamble. See. I don't believe. <laughs> exactly. I don't believe that's a very happy coach over there. Oh, no. He, he is, is not, not at all. pleased. And Ways kick bounces and it goes inside the 10 yard line, inside the five yard line. That's a beautiful kick by the left footed puncher, Tress Way. Tomorrow morning on ESPN, don't miss Sunday NFL Countdown. Join Boomer, TJ, Mike Ditka, Chris Carter, Keyshawn Johnson, Coach Parcells. you got three hours of insight and analysis. Get you all set for a big day of Sunday's NFL action. And Sunday NFL Countdown presented by IBM tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. It's a good group of guys right there. You want to talk some good football, I have a blast with those guys. At Ditka, I'm a big Ditka fan. The Bears. Well, right now it is these Bears. He's got to gain some ground. He actually there. does. You know, he was smothered down there, and he does as Griffin will close out this first half with a touchdown lead over number five. Baylor has never defeated Oklahoma. 0 for 20. Let's check in with Aaron. Coach, after Baylor's quick strike, we saw you talking to Javon Harris. What would you like your defense to pay attention to here on situations like that? He's a deep player. Stay on top. He's just biting on. He's trying to play it too tight. You also mentioned before the game taking care of the task at hand, you know, not looking ahead. What's the number one thing they need to worry about here at the half? We're nobody's do doing any of that. We just haven't played very well offensively, defensively. We played good up until that play. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thanks, Aaron. Aaron brought up Javon Harris. He was beat on that 69-yard touchdown by Tevin Reese. 17-10 Baylor. Now let's go to John Anderson and Jesse Palmer for the Capital One Halftime Report. Gentlemen. We welcome you back to ABC Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines. Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, Aaron Andrews with you here in Waco. Baylor has never defeated Oklahoma in 20 attempts, but right now a halftime lead, 17 to 10. And Matt, stats are fairly comparable from the first half. The difference in my eyes, the big quick strike ability downfield with the receivers of the Bears. Yeah, there's no question to two big plays down the field, but lost in all this at the beginning of the game we saw that Oklahoma defense pounding Robert Griffin every time he right. threw the ball all of a sudden they've started to protect give him time and he's able to make those throws and then Phil Bennett the defense for, <laughs> let me get that straight the defensive coordinator for the Baylor Bears he has dialed up a couple of nice pressures and he's taken some chances and they've paid off in the first half now let me offer you this as you see Bennett there who's going to have to do more of that defensive effort Oklahoma gets the ball to start the second half They've outscored opponents 118 mm. to 10 in the third quarters of games this year. So look for the Sooners to potentially get on the board quick here in this second half. Here is Finch on the return. And Roy Finch out past the 30-yard line. So our pack life game summary and those big plays that we were describing. Well, you talked about him because once Robert Griffin had a little time, and there was pressure in his face, Kendall Wright, 55 yards, led to that big touchdown by Yadaway. And then, again, 69-yarder to Tevin Reese. The blown coverage by the Sooners resulted in six quick. That is our Pacific Life game summary. And as you see, Griffin's numbers. Of course, he is opposite. One of the most statistically impressive quarterbacks in the game. Landry Jones back out on the field. Here's Brennan Clay. And Clay, a gain of about two. And here's Aaron Andrews. 
Hey, Joe, you talk about the quick strike by Robert Griffin at the end of the uh, first half there. Well, and speaking to his head coach, Art Bryles, he said he wants to have quick tempo here in the second half. He thought they sort of slacked off a little bit. They need to pick it up. As for the defense, he is so happy with them. Said in the second half, need to play with a little bit of emotion, but he loves their tenacity. And he could also use plays that sparkle as much as those shoes you're wearing tonight, EA. <laughs> Jones, he has the strike downfield, and he connects with James Hanna, who breaks free inside the 20, all the way down to about the 12-yard line. Impressive stuff by Jones and Hanna. Well, we talked about the speed and the athletes that are on this roster, and it's play action to the left that's designed to pull the middle of the field to that left side. Hanna fills that right side void with a perfect strike from the quarterback. 54-yard reception to the big tight end. Brennan play now, straight up the middle, and play with about eight and a half yards, finally taken down by Sam Hall. That was attitude, and where it showed up was in the offensive line. That was pure power. They came off the ball, good fundamentals. And fundamentals is the key at any level of football. It's fundamentals which got them beat on those big plays in the first half. And now it's carrying them. Looks like that offensive line. And the big quarterback, Blake Bell, comes in. Second and two. Bell handoff, Millard, and he just bulls his way in for the score. We told you, Oklahoma in the third quarter this year, they're used to romping. And they got a little bit of a chewing at halftime because they came back with fundamental football. And that starts up front. Donald Stevens, Stevenson, the left tackle, 59. Shed, 74, the guard. Eichert, the center. Tyler Evans, 75 inside. Lane Johnson, 69, the right tackle. They came off with what you call a flat back and moved that line of scrimmage. And now Michael Honeycutt ties it up. They didn't waste any time at all. They had the big strike to James Hanna and then the power game with Trey Miller. We got a tie ball game here in Waco. High pressure kind of game for Oklahoma with so much riding in these last few weeks of the season and nobody knows that better than coach Bob Stoops. This is what he looked like just about a half an hour ago when they were trailing by seven and somebody was getting a talking to and this is what he looks like Matt moments ago tying up the game. <laughs> He's, that's the happy Bob right now. In the first half he was the uh, not so happy Bob and now he's just a pensive Bob. The only coach to reach all four BCS Bowl games and the national title game, and he's hoping to somehow pull that out this year in the chaos that is turning into the BCS rankings right now. Antoine Goodley on the return, and Goodley is taken down at about the 23. We check in with Robert Flores. All right, Joe, AT&T All-America Player of the Week update. Arkansas quarterback Tyler Wilson, worthy nominee. Three touchdowns, 365 yards as Arkansas handled Mississippi State today. You can text vote to 55862 for a chance at a trip to the national title. And this coming Friday, Arkansas takes on number one LSU. Yeah, Arkansas a team that can disrupt the BCS mm -hmm. as well as they will play LSU next week. And they're so talented with Tyler Wilson and Jarius Wright and Joe Adams at receiver. Robert Griffin the third. Batted in the air, and it falls harmlessly to the ground. That was Casey Walker who had the deflection there. Casey Walker is wearing number 12 tonight. That is in honor of Austin Box, who passed away this offseason under tragic circumstances, and his memory still lives on every week. They leave an open spot in the pregame stretches. Locker remains untouched, and the number 12 carries on. Nowhere to go that time. Frank Alexander and Corey Nelson were quick to get to Terrence Ganaway. Two guys that we spoke a lot of in the first half. 
they were bringing pressure and Alexander was beating Cyril Richardson that right tackle pretty regular in that first quarter and then it slowed down big third down here for both sides I remember Oklahoma defense playing without Ron L. Lewis their star defensive end who was injured earlier third and 11 Griffin all kinds of time and that's going to be close to the line to make as Kendall Wright came up with the catch. Looks it was like Travis good, Lewis who tackled him. Matt. Looks like a good spot right there. It depends which foot he puts it on. His right or his left. Remember, our yellow line is not an official marker. But a nice job by by Wright to have a presence of where that uh, the sticks are. It's a good Look job by Travis Lewis to jump immediately on Kendall Wright, force him back. Let's see if the forward progress did indeed get him the first down. Mm. You got a credit card in your wallet, Matt? <laughs> no, I'm a cash guy. It's going to be fourth and about an Amex. Well, they're going to bring out the big boys. Maybe try a, a false count here. From their own 34? Yeah, try to get them to jump, yeah. perhaps. You never know, Art Riles. Up. Yeah. Well, it's happened before in big spots like this with teams trying to disrupt things and get a signature win. Randy Edsel did it from his own 19 last year against Pitt and converted it, and they went to a BCS Bowl. Griffin, you tell me. No. I don't think so at all. That was David King stepping up. And this is a turnover on downs. How about that from David King? Art Bryles dialed it up. And they, they being Oklahoma, they won the battle up front. And they won it by coming off the ball low. And you think their defensive coordinator, Brett Venables, is fired up about that? <laughs> All they have to do is be as intense as their defensive coordinator and they'll play well. David King, by the way, is the guy who's filling in for the injured Lewis. That was big. They came off the ball nice and low. And now it's great field position for Oklahoma to take the lead here. Jones downfield strike and that is complete inside the five to Kenny Stills. That was all Kenny Stills. That ball is underthrown on purpose, and then it's up to the athleticism and the kinesthetic sense that Kenny Stills brings to the receiving position. And this is the spot on the field where big Blake Bell re-enters the game, the six foot six, 245 pound redshirt freshman. He is basically the direct snap power back. Trey Millard also in the backfield with him. Bell looking for room and finding it with ease, his second touchdown of the night. Joe, they go to power. They know that they're, they're letting you know they're going to come with power. And Ripkowski, he's in there for a reason. Miller's in there for a reason. You see those two big blocks? Blowing that, it up. That's the reason. They're physical, and they're just saying, listen, we're going to blow you off the ball, and then they go and do it. Millard goes 249, Matt. Ripkowski goes 255, and they're clearing the way for a 6'6", 245 quarterback. <laughs> Excuse me? And it is a touchdown lead for the Sooners. Remember, Baylor went for it on fourth and short. David King stopped Robert Griffin the third. Venables was loving it. And now a touchdown lead is the reward. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Sherlock Holmes Game of Shadows in theaters December 16th.
and Citizen Echo Drive. Fueled by light, it never needs a battery. Unstoppable. Waco, Texas is home to Dr. Pepper, the oldest major soft drink manufacturer in the U.S. And the Dr. Pepper Museum includes the original 1906 bottling plant, one of the finest collections of memorabilia in the world with soft drinks. It's one of the first things you think about when you think Waco. A cold Dr. Pepper and a little barbecue. And the bridge. Yep. And if the Baylor Bears can get after it here, maybe a signature win to this college football season. But right now, it's Oklahoma's typical third quarter effort that has them up 24 to 17. Short kick returned by Goodley. Goodley still on his feet and finally driven out at about the 27. Time for our Big 12 Conference update brought to you by Dr. Pepper. All the attention put to that one loss now in the column of Oklahoma State as you see Oklahoma trying to meet up with them for the Bedlam game that will be on December 3rd. The plan for Oklahoma all along was to be the ones that handed Oklahoma State their first loss and use that as a springboard to make their argument to be in the BCS title game. Now, a little bit has been lost on that game, but still, with what's happening in college football last night and currently tonight with USC up big on Oregon, Oklahoma still very much in the mix. Who knows the way the next few weeks will play out. LSU still has to play Arkansas. A lot to be determined. It was the Dr. Pepper 10. Griffin underneath to Kendall Wright. He tries to shake free, and he gets it to the 35, tackled by Harris. You know, Joe, I've had this Oklahoma Sooner team three times this year, and every time we've had them, they've come out just absolutely smoking in the third quarter. And that, to me, is a credit to the adjustments by their coaching staff. It's going to be a yard short is Ganaway. Here's Robert Flores. All right, Joe. Another studio update, and it's University of Texas just up I-35 or down I-35 from where you're, you're at in Waco. Case McCoy to Blake Bell and Texas within seven and Oregon getting blown out at US to USC. And Baylor gets a first down. Oregon getting blown out against USC. USC has just scored again. And what a shakeup to the landscape of college football this weekend. If USC can hold on against Oregon. You know what happened in the thriller with Iowa State against Oklahoma State. BCS standings just thrown into that blender. Here's Lanier Sampson. And he's able to get it past midfield to the 49. Joe, and all those things going on in college football right back here at Baylor, what they need to do is get another quick strike. And then defensively, they've got to be able to do what they were doing in the first half. They can't give up big plays, but it starts right here with the with a big play offense. Griffin escapes. Oh, oh, what an effort by Wright to even go up and put a hand on that ball. Man, that was on both sides, Joe. First, Griffin, the third, right here. Watch him make a miss and then have the wherewithal to find him. Gets drilled by Ward. Second and ten. Downfield. Complete! He took a couple steps with it to Terrence Williams, but couldn't hold on. Looked like he was running with it in stride, Matt. He had it. That play, that is an awesome throw by Griffin the third. It looks like that hit woke him up. Because this thing is, look at this, look at this window he throws it into. Right there. Never has control of the ball. Third and ten, and that time he overthrows Lanier Sampson. So the Oklahoma defense dodges a bullet there as Williams was unable to control that ball that he was running in stride with into the end zone and instead they come up empty on a third and ten. Well it looks like they're going to they're going to throw the punt team out there now. But there was a little debate on the sideline there. There so was a mix up between uh, Griffin and Sampson. Spencer Roth does come on as Griffin Helmet off over to the sideline. It has been a big start to the third quarter for Oklahoma. They've outscored opponents this year. Now 132 to 10 in third quarter action. 
And the fair catch by Stills inside the 15. You know, Joe, when you look at this Oklahoma team, there's a lot of things that go into the passing game. One is protection, but one on top of that is the passing lanes that are formed because of the protection. And Landry Jones has had easy lanes to throw into, and it makes for good mechanics and also great vision. And when you have that vision, you're able to be that much more accurate. You can see this nicely done up front by the offensive line, and those passing and throwing lanes are picture perfect. Andrew Jones, you see what he's done since that 7 of 13 start. See if he can keep himself hot here in the third. And he quickly gets it on the play action. As he was able to find the fullback, Millard. Trey Millard, he's so versatile. We watched him tonight, and in the short yardage situations, pounding guys with his blocking. We've watched him carry the ball a couple times, but he can catch it. He blocks at the line of scrimmage. That's a so that's a very valuable football player. See how upset Terrence Williams is over on the Baylor bench. And meanwhile, Rodney Chadwick is down at the end of that play on the sideline. He is the starting weak side linebacker. Guy who's a very active linebacker himself, but Williams being consoled by some of those offensive teammates. And it was moments ago when Baylor thought they were tying up this game. Look at this in stride. Yeah, and you don't get many of those opportunities. And, and so when they do come, you've got to capitalize on them. And it's really the small things. So all of you high school players out there, it's concentration, it's looking the ball in, it's securing the ball, it's all of those things what are just the fundamentals of the game that makes the difference between a good and a great play. And that would have been a great one. Aaron, the mood has changed down there on the field, huh? It certainly has, and when we look at the shot of Williams with his head down, you know, our Friles even stopped by for just a minute and said, you got to pick your head up, we're going to need you, and all his teammates, as you guys noted, trying to help him out here. So a first and 10 for Oklahoma at the 25. Jones gets away from the pressure and then gets the back finch for a gain of eight and a half yards, and... He was hit hard by K.J. Morton. As they continue to work on Rodney Chadwick, this is a defense that can't afford to have its best players out of action. Brody Trahan is the backup linebacker who will see time in place of Chadwick. He's a former dual-threat quarterback who made the move over to defense. Second and one. Finch cuts back, cuts to the outside, stays on his feet, picks up a block, and is able to scoot himself out of bounds at the 45. I want you to watch his lateral cuts, his lateral movement, seemingly going forward, and then he is just so good right, right there. See that? That lateral movement is what separates him from the pack. Inch the loan back here on first down. Jones. He has options. Oh, that was overthrown, but strangely, Stills. And a little extra something with K.J. Morton. I don't know what that one was about with Stills, but he had the route and lots of time to make that throw. And then it just looks like he either tripped on him or the turf monster got him. Something yeah, he just got went him. down to the ground, Matt. Instead of going up for that ball, Stills was all of a sudden on the turf. Yeah, that's just on him. I don't know what he'd be mad about. Well, I think he may be mad on uh, the way that Morton came back and turned around yeah. and said a little something, and they weren't trading cookie recipes. <laughs> Second and ten now. Looking for Clay out of the backfield, and just a minimal gain that time for the sophomore back from California. Big third down for the Baylor Bears. 
Down seven. They've given up two scores here in the third quarter. They've got to capture some of the momentum back. And this third down could swing it. They only send three after Landry Jones, and it's going to be short of the line to make a flag is down, though, in the backfield, all the way back at the 42-yard line. It's going to be a hold against Oklahoma. They're going to have to decide whether they want to roll the dice if Oklahoma would go for it on holding. Fourth holding. Offense, down. number 59. That penalty's declined. Result of the play, fourth down. So it'll be fourth down at the 46. And Bob Stoops with the touchdown lead sends out Tressway. Pump this thing away. That was a big stop. It really Baylor was, wasn't it? Yeah, it really Because was. you could just feel that all the momentum and energy had left Floyd Casey Stadium, and they need to find a way to get it back after such a successful first half. Punt was juggled by Norwood for just a moment before he was able to secure it at the 16. Oh, what could have been for the Baylor Bears, but they get another chance when we return. The chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup concludes with the Ford 400 at Homestead, Miami. It's going to begin 2 Eastern on ESPN with NASCAR Countdown presented by Napa. Here's what you need to know. Carl Edwards and Tony Stewart are in a heavyweight fight for the big prize. Just three points separating them. They've talked enough all week. Now they got to get after it tomorrow. Full contact racing. That's what I like to see. They got me interested. I got to be honest with you, Matt. I've, well, of course, I've read the promo about 400 times in the last two days, but they got me interested. And that is incomplete. A flag is down. He was looking for Tevin Reese. Illegal motion. Offense, number 16. Five-yard penalty. First down. Art Bryles looks on as his team had so much momentum at the end of the first half, a 17 to 10 lead. They had that big strike, the 69 yarder to Reese. But in this second half, well, that look says it all. It's been typical Oklahoma as the number five team in the country has scored two touchdowns. Millard had the touchdown run. Big Blake Bell came in from a couple yards out. And Griffin is now searching for answers with this Bears offense. Keeps it himself, and he is crunched after a gain of two, and another flag comes in. Well, if you questioned Robert Griffin III's toughness, that question's been answered because he has been taking some shots tonight. Illegal shift offense. Two men moving without resetting. That penalty's declined. Second down. You know, typically the rap on track guys and he's right. a world-class hurdler is that you wouldn't give that description to him no you would not you would you would uh, say that they're steeped in a pusillanimous sort of fashion <laughs> a world-class hurdler who won the big 12 hurdles when he was an early enrollee in the spring that he came to Baylor out of high school it should have been his senior year in high school instead he was a track all-american second and 13. And that ball is floating in the air and picked up by Kendall Wright. Touchdown, Bears. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. The bounce into the arms goes for an 87-yard touchdown. You know, Joe, let me just say this right now. This is going to be the top play in the Sports Center top 10 play. Guaranteed. Lock it in. 87 yard touchdown the ball tipped in the air and Kendall Wright picks it out and runs it in it 
was intended for Kevin Reese, who stopped his route, slowed his route down, allowed the defender, actually the undercut him, and got a hand on it. But as fate would have it, took it straight in the air, and Kendall Wright's right there. Watch Kevin Reese, he's, a, he's the inside guy right up top. Now he slows his route down, and Wart gets his hand on it, pops it in the air. Kendall Wright, touchdown. What a way to tie up the game against the fifth ranked team in the country. And sometimes, Matt, you need those kind of plays to pull off this kind of a game. There's no question. And Robert Griffin III is like, yeah, I can't believe that just happened. And he looks to the heavens and says, I'll take it. <laughs> now, Any way you can get it when you're playing Oklahoma. The lesson to be learned there was that Kendall Wright never quit. He kept on going. And the hustle end of that play turned into six. Great point. Here's Trey Franks. And Franks is met at the 27-yard line by Cordarius Golston. So Oklahoma surged ahead with two quick strikes. And then all of a sudden, luck came Baylor's way as Wright never gave up on the play and went 87 yards. Glacial expressions over on the Sooner side. Riles looking for some support here at Floyd Casey in this crowd, knowing the defense could use it against Landry Jones and the Sooners offense. Finch spins out of the way and just gets back to the line of scrimmage as Nicholas Jean-Baptiste would not let go of him. Yeah, it looks like Jean-Baptiste, he, he came to play tonight. A week ago, he did not play well. I watched that tape, and it was, for a guy with his skills, was embarrassing. Bill but, Bennett told us if he doesn't play better, he's not playing. He's been playing better tonight, Matt, right? He's been playing pretty darn good. Second and ten. Jones looking over his options and then decides to run it and makes a very nice move to get ahead for the first down. Not known as a runner. And what he does when he pulls it down, he's going to make you miss right there. Who's that? Mason? Yeah, Gary Mason Jr. Not good. 11 yard scamper for Landry Jones. You know what he can do through the air, and you see it with the 300-plus yard games consistently showing up in his box score. And here's Roy Finch, and Finch is corralled. Very good pursuit that time by Mike Hicks and Chris McAllister, both of them getting over there for Baylor. Yeah, and they made the tackle, but Ahmad Dixon made the play. Mm -hmm. He did not allow him to get off and get to the outside, which is where he really wanted to get to. But he fought off the block and forced it back inside and allowed the others to make the play. One of the highest ranked recruits in decades to come to Baylor is Dixon. Second and nine. Pressure up the middle, and they got to him. There's our guy, Nicholas Jean Baptiste. I like that he's making plays because I like to say Jean Baptiste. Parlez-vous. Oh, and he can turn around though and thank his coverage because they had nowhere to go with this ball. Well done, keeping the top to the coverage the whole time. Underneath is there as well. And then Jean Baptiste with a big sack. They need to get to midfield here on third down. Crowd has come alive. Tie game, looking for a defensive stop. And it's incomplete off the hands of Kenny Stills. And he knows it. He knows he just wasted a great throw and a big opportunity. Third and long. He gets to where he has to get the hole in the zone. And the ball's right where it needs to be. And he doesn't pull it in. That's on him. Remember, Ryan Royals, the ultimate go-to guy. 
out for the year with that torn ACL. The NCAA all-time leader in career receptions. Somebody has to step up for Oklahoma. Tressway with the boot. Directional pick that was a bit short, but takes an Oklahoma bounce all the way to the 15-yard line. Some of the big plays from Baylor tonight. Kendall Wright streaking and going 55 yards. He became the single-season receiving record holder with that. And then Reese on the glory end from Robert Griffin III. But moments ago, one of the best plays of the week, you'll see the tip ball and Kendall Wright 87-yard touchdown reception to tie this game. A game that has great implications on the BCS standings because Oklahoma right now sitting at number five is one of those one-loss teams that's going to try to make their argument. You got Oregon losing. Oklahoma State has already caught a loss. They have to win here to stay in the hunt incomplete on first down. I'm a little surprised out of Baylor's offense that they don't, now not that time they did actually try to move Griffin out of the pocket and get him on the run. But I, I, I'm surprised I haven't seen more of that, uh, moving the quarterback to take a little bit of that pass rush away. Phil Montgomery is the offensive coordinator you see there, talking into the headset dead center. See what he dials up here on second and 10. As Kenny Stills looks on, could have kept his team on the field on that last offensive play for the Sooners. Oh, he's got him. He's going to take a shot again for Reese. And he just overthrew him by maybe half a step. There is a major mix-up in the coverage for the Oklahoma Sooners. They ended up getting a linebacker, Travis Lewis, on Reese. That should never happen. There's got to be deep help somehow. Stills knows what that feels like. He's written on his defense as Bob Stoops just shakes his head, trying to avoid the dangers of the capable Robert Griffin III. Third and ten now. And a timeout is going to be called by Coach Art Bryles and the Baylor Bears. Time for tonight's big picture, brought to you by Sony. Twenty-four, twenty-four here in Waco. And as for some of the storylines that everybody's talking about last night, the thriller up in Ames, Oklahoma State, handed their first loss. Meanwhile, Clemson who was 9-1, battered by NC State. Michigan State is headed to the Big Ten title game. And Georgia, after that slow start to their year, will find a home in the SEC championship game. Most think they will play LSU, but remember, Arkansas awaits the number one Tigers. Third and ten now for Griffin. Steps up against the pressure and completes it for a first down to Kendall Wright. That was really well done by Griffin. His eyes were down the field the whole time. And Kendall Wright, you see him going in motion to the bottom of your screen. He knows where Wright is right away. And there he comes to the middle of the field. Quick snap to Ganaway, and he runs for close to ten yards. Good inside run by the 240 pound senior now they pick up that pace map and they need to they keep him off balance it's the same thing that Oklahoma tries to do to their opposition and now they're getting a little bit of the dose back at them well you just blink with Robert Griffin and he's over 300 yards he's going for 330 and two touchdowns looking to add to that here but here with green grass ahead of him look at the speed 
and he smartly settles in before making contact inside the 35. But you give him that one moment to make a decision, and he's downfield. And he knows it right away. He saw the coverage, and he saw the passing lane, which turned into a running lane, and you're not catching him. 24-yard run by RG3. Now it's Ganaway's turn. And he will be tackled for a loss that time by Corey Nelson and Tony Jefferson. If you're sitting at home and you're wondering why the official stood over the ball, they substituted offensively, so he has to allow the defense time to do it. That is Tony Jefferson. Plays that hybrid linebacker safety. They call it the Roy Williams position after one of the all-time greats. And Jefferson's play sets up this third and long for Baylor. Third and 17, trying to get down to the 25-yard line. Empty backfield for Griffin. Can he get out of that mess? Backed all the way up to his 40. And then he is able to get a complete, but obviously well short as he found Jared Salubi. The guy who's impressive. Now we know that Robert Griffin III has world-class speed. But Corey Nelson is in hot pursuit of him, and he does not back down or lose a step as in his chase. Seems like we've called his name a lot tonight, doesn't it? I, I just, I'm really impressed with him. They are going for it on 4th and 11, I guess in what they consider no man's land of the 36-yard line. Risk-reward, will they get it? They bring pressure on 4th and 11. And a diving effort that time by Terrence Williams as well as the flag. Remember what happened just moments ago with Williams. Pass interference, defense number 32, that penalty is declined, first down. On fourth and 11, Williams pays them back. Against their best defender, and yes, it's the right call, and Williams with the long face on the sideline now can put a smile on it. They were threatening now, look at that play action, did he ever sell that? Touchdown, Jordan Niver. Oh my, did RG3 sell it, and did Oklahoma buy it? <laughs> we got ourselves a humdinger going on. Because RG3, 370 yards throwing, a lot of big plays in this game, some great catches. This third quarter Oklahoma had all the momentum but Baylor now has scored two unanswered okay here's the cell right here hard cell down inside let everybody bite and then here he comes delayed off the top side ball where it has to be see how he threw it to the outside of work hard cell right there gets everybody and they caught him in a blitz and Jordan Niver, who is from Houston, he was a good recruit, who actually went out and started his career playing at Stanford. But he was a Texan who wanted to come back home, and he scores there, does the 6'6", 260-pound transfer from the Pac-12 in what Baylor is hoping will be one of the biggest wins they've ever had in school history. They've never beat Oklahoma. That doesn't help. No, it doesn't. The flag comes in as Oklahoma will have good field position with that penalty. Free kick out of bounds. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First and 10. Tuesday night, don't miss an all-new episode of ABC's Last Man Standing, nominated for the People's Choice Award for Best New Comedy. Tim Allen is the last man standing Tuesday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. Well, I don't know that Sully from Monsters, Inc. is going to be the last man standing, but the question for college football fans is who will be 
one of the last teams standing in the BCS standings, which will be revealed Sunday night, 8-15 on ESPN. Reese Davis and the guys. There's going to be a lot of intrigue when Reese reveals the new BCS standings. Oklahoma State lost. Oregon is losing. And who knows what will go down here in Waco as number five trails now by a touchdown. Brandon Williams just about a yard and a half for the true freshman from Brookshire, Texas, one of the top recruits in the country. And that play, the tackle was made inside, but Jean-Baptiste made the play. Had a nice push up the field and forced everything back inside where it looked like Coffee was able to clean it up. They needed the big 335-pound space filler to have a big night, and he's doing so. Second and nine now. Empty for Landry Jones. A little bit of pressure off the edge, but he gets it complete out to the 47-yard line to James Hanna. James Hanna's had a nice night here tonight. Sure has. Had a couple of big plays, and now we got that third down. Four catches for 90 yards for Hanna, and once again, Floyd Casey as the last 20 seconds of the third quarter countdown. The crowd comes alive. Third and three. Bill Bennett is signaling as fast as he can on the sideline. Could it be one of those special nights here in Waco when finally victory is theirs over the Sooners? 0 for 20 previously. And after our game tonight for your late local news on most of these ABC stations and over on ESPN, you can catch SportsCenter for post-game analysis of this game as well as all of today's scores and highlights we got a thriller here in Waco and Oklahoma is facing a third and three against the upset minded Baylor Bears and complete for the first down to Trey Miller glad you're with us Joe Tessitore Matt Millen and Aaron Andrews here in Waco Texas number five Oklahoma trying to stay alive in the BCS title hunt as a one-loss team, Baylor has never defeated the Sooners. 0 for 20, and they're up a touchdown. Stills unable to get to the edge as he was forced out by Elliott Coffee. Jones intercepted KJ Morton with the pickoff. That's on Landry Jones. Morton plays it well. He had position the whole time. Landry Jones, just an errant throw. Well protected. You see Hannah at the top. And you see, he was just hanging back there. He was waiting on it. Great job of sinking your coverage. Poor read by Landry Jones. He knows it too, Joe. He does indeed. Jones, who has broken all the all-time records and been so good for so long, but at a crucial time like that, Mistakes can be costly. Let's see if Baylor makes them pay. Griffin downfield and in stride is Sampson. He breaks free, cuts down to the 24-yard line. Here come the Bears. Keep in mind, this was the offensive line that was getting pummeled at the beginning of the game, but not anymore. And because of the protection, Samson gets to the middle of the field, and then he's just off to the races. 50-yard reception. 
for Lanier Sampson. Well, the crowd doesn't like that at all, Matt. Well, I know they don't like it, but it's the rule. Exactly. And the, because the reason it's the rule, you can go hurry up. But because you're changing personnel offensively, you have to give them the opportunity. You have to give them the opportunity. And now, if they don't, if they just go hurry up, like Oklahoma goes up real fast to keep the same personnel, then they can catch you off guard. So, because they change personnel, that is the call there. So, instead, they slow it down here before this first and 10. Oh, a bad snap. And Griffin is going to try to make the most of it, and incomplete is what he needs. That is smart. And that will get it back to the line of scrimmage. Had he just jumped on the ball, that's a disaster. And it took a fortuitous bounce. And he's able to pick it up. But this thing, he's not even ready for it. It just goes flying past his left shoulder. You see how it just bounces up. And he's able to get outside the tackle box and throw it past the line of scrimmage. And that saves the down. Philip Blake is the center. He's a Canadian who is considered an NFL prospect, goes 6'3", 320. So now it just shapes up as a second and 10 for Griffin and the Bears. And here is Griffin, tried to stiff arm his way to some freedom, and a flag comes in right at the spot. That was Travis, Travis Lewis maybe got a chunk of the face mask. I thought actually that was a pretty good play by Travis Lewis. He came from inside out. That's hard to do against first Griffin. profile face mask defense number 32 half the distance to the goal from the end of the run automatic first down watch him come from inside out he got it he got the steal referee Mike Defee called it number 32 it's obviously number 28 Travis Lewis so the ball will be placed at the 11 yard line actually Joe I think a pretty well officiated game here tonight I agree we had a couple touchdowns brought back with penalties. So first down at the 11. Ganaway. Touchdown, Baylor. The interception by Landry Jones came at a big price. And Philip Blake, the center, who just snapped that errant snap, was right in the middle of the blocking to be able to gut that Oklahoma defense. It all started with K.J. Morton. The Baylor cornerback, right spot, right place with the pick. And then Terrence Ganaway makes the margin 14. Our Pacific Life game summary presents a potential upset here in Waco, 38-24, and what a night. For RG3, Matt. And keep in mind, that's 422 yards, and there were three other plays that this thing could be over 500 yards. There was, they called one back, there was a drop, and he overthrew one just by a touch. Griffin has had completions of 50, 55, 69, and 87, and a 79 yarder was called back by a penalty. Trey Franks. And the Sooners will start from about the 30-yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown by Ganaway that capped the quick strike four-play drive that only took a minute 21. There's Blake, the center. This is redemption time. There's Koffold, the left guard, and Richardson, Cyril Richardson, 68, the left tackle. Niver, the tight end. Watch all good assignments knowing what you're doing Niver to second level here's the opportunity to make the play you have to make it right there it's Corey Nelson just runs right through it and everybody else is blocked and it's six quick
Finch trying to find room out to the 35 yard line. He found Elliott Coffee and Sam Hall. There's Ganaway, Baylor. And we were talking touchdowns him. after uh, Oklahoma scored two quick ones. We were talking Ganaway just the other day, and he was saying, How will our team respond to the challenge? He wants to see who is going to come to play. And they were challenged right here in the second half. Oklahoma did exactly what you'd expect the Sooners to do when they came out from the locker room. Jones now. That was a good looking throw to Jazz Reynolds. And a good looking catch, knowing he's going to get hit at Sam Hall right there. He's, he's staring right in the face of Hall. He knows the ball's to the inside, but he still goes and gets it. And look at the hit he took to that left arm. And he waved over the medical staff immediately did Jazz Reynolds, the receiver. Eighty two yards on the night for Reynolds. He's had uh, four touchdowns in their last three games and he's one of the guys they pointed to as a sophomore with size and speed and those big hands as a guy who could step up in the absence of the star receiver Ryan Broyles who's out for the year. And you know when speaking of Ryan Broyles we're saying who's going to take that spot who's going to step up it's not it's not the the move the chains catches it's not it's the critical catches that Ryan Broyles brought to this offense the one that Kenny Stills dropped that's the one that Ryan Broyles takes to the bank. Well with Stills being tended to an opportunity to check in with Robert Flores Robert. All right Joe things have gotten tight in Eugene between USC and Oregon LaMichael James one yard touchdown plunge then the ensuing two point conversion check out the catch by Lavazier two and eight. one foot in is all you need and USC's lead down to three in the fourth quarter. Thanks Robert so Jazz Reynolds able to walk off the field so things have tightened up between USC and Oregon Oklahoma has a lot of business to take care of here to come back against Baylor but you know that's the kind of outcome they need is USC holding on against Oregon but for right now Oklahoma needs to score fast. Jones dumps it off and that was Trent Rattery who had nowhere to go Elliot Coffey found him. And that was the time if you're the Oklahoma Sooners your big players big players have to make a big play because this is the time the 11 minute mark you're down by 14 your whole season still in front of you who will step up keep it on the ground with Finch oh what a beautiful move by Finch and he's still battling down to the 21 yard line that was Rodney Chadwick who couldn't get to Roy Finch look at that move well that is Joe Washington esque right there and that's the stuff that you see few players can do that Roy French brings it to the table he said who's going to step up there's one step right there first down at the 21 Trying to cut into this Baylor lead. Jones. And he's just going to launch this out of bounds. He didn't have a lot of options on that far side of the field. Ahmad Dixon came after him with a little bit of pressure. You know, I've been talking about Roy Finch and Joe Washington. As you look at Bill Bennett, the defensive coordinator, Joe Washington was a great, great player at the University of Oklahoma, an All American here back in the 70s and a great professional player and he had the whole package Roy Finch has a touch of it. second and ten now pressure off the edge and they get to Roy Finch that time Elliot Coffey got to him Dixon was coming in off the edge and Coffey found Roy Finch so it'll be a third and long now Coffey came on a blitz Sets up this big third down, but Coffey's played himself a whale of a football game here tonight. Had a big one last week, and he's following it up with another big one. Heart and soul of this defense is the senior linebacker, number four, Coffey. Third and 14. 
Coming up on the 10 minute mark and number five is trailing by two scores. Jones pumps once then to the air and he overthrew Trent Rattery. Rattery wanted the flag but didn't get it. Looked like Coffey had the coverage on him down the field. Rattery's not going to win any races here. Well, that's Trey Franks in the middle of the field. Bob Stoops can only look on now and hope for the best on a fourth and 14. Who will make the big play? To the end zone, well overthrown. Baylor's defense holds against Landry Jones. Great coverage. Great coverage. Kept Jones inside the pocket, but down the field, nowhere to go with the football. How about the job they did on Jazz Reynolds? Covering him well on fourth down. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. And Nissan, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. That is defensive coordinator Phil Bennett of Baylor. And moments ago, he saw his defense face a fourth down with Oklahoma desperate to stay in this game. And what he was praising him for was great discipline. You know the down and distance, okay? There's no threat on the top side, so you sink as a defender knowing you have somebody on the top half. And then here's the bait. They want you to bite on this to open this, and then inside they're trying to get there, but they take it away because there's nothing to hold them. And because they kept their discipline, no place to go with the ball, great defense. Screen now. Tevin Reese. Let's check in with Aaron. I'm going to need you to get your depth charts out. We've got some uh, injury reports down here. Javon Harris, who's had a rough night, he's dealing with a right ankle injury. And also for the Sooners on offense, when they get back on the field, Roy Finch dealing with the left ankle, and Jazz Reynolds, they're dealing with his shoulder right now. Those are three guys they can't do without. So Aaron gives us the update there. As this is launched and almost intercepted. A flag is down. But Bob Stoops, as Aaron just reported, now dealing with a few of his key players not at 100 percent will get the penalty here. The penalty withstanding that was an opportunity for the Sooners that ball was pickable. It was floated out there to the near side. Illegal substitution offense. Receiver stepped on the field of play, never got inside the nine yard marks. Five yard penalty, second down. A lot of cleaning up to do there, huh? <laughs> A lot of cleaning up. But you know the good thing, they had their conference to make sure that everybody was on the same page, and then they get the call right. Again, I think this has been a very well officiated game tonight. Second and 11. For Robert Griffin III, who just needs five yards to surpass his school record for passing yards in a game. He has 426 as it stands. There you go. And he's going to be close to the record right there. He's got it right there. It's a gain of six. Robert Griffin, a real confident guy. I had a nice conversation with him yesterday. And he knows exactly what he wants to do and how he's doing it. Just another 433 yard day. Third and four now. There was 
movement there on the left side of the line as Oklahoma start, showed a bit of pressure. Offense, number 68, five-yard penalty, third down. Big Cyril Richardson, the big man. So they back him up here on third down. The third and nine. As Baylor looks up at that clock and thinks to themselves, could we hold on here? Could we make history finally in Waco? Art Bryles has been building this program, headed in the right direction, but never has Baylor beaten Oklahoma. Third and nine. What does Griffin come up with here? It's going to be well short, and he took a push out of bounds by R.J. Washington. Looks lost in all that was the ability of the Oklahoma Sooner defense to get this ball back. The nine minute mark, there's lots of time for them to score. We know how fast these oh, teams can they score. They don't waste any time offensively. So Roth on to kick to Kenny Stills, and he should give them very good field position as he's awaiting this at the 40. They come after it a bit, and it's a very good kick by Roth. Back stills up inside the 20. And he loses the ball out of bounds at about the 25. That was Lanier Sampson, the wide receiver, playing special teams. 8.27 to go. Oklahoma with the ball, trailing by 14 when we return. We're going to try to figure out the BCS. Tomorrow night on ESPN, you can join Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, and Craig James for BCS Countdown. They're going to unveil the latest BCS poll. BCS Countdown presented by Vizio tomorrow night, 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. And this game could greatly disrupt those BCS standings. Brandon Williams and Williams cuts back and does so with ease for a gain of about 12 yards and a first down. Williams is the true freshman who was an early enrollee last January. Still plenty of time. They don't need the quick strike. Jones on first down. Complete and another well close to a first down to Dewan Miller Meanwhile in Oregon USC has pulled the upset So Oklahoma fans would love to see a rally here as number four the team that sits just in front of them has lost Can Jones pull off a rally of his own? Williams now, and look at Brandon Williams. Another 12 yards as they cross midfield down to the 40-yard line, tackled by Sam Hall. Nice vision by Williams. Starting to the right, they cut that backside off, and he sees it right away and just out the back gate. They're on a move. Coming up on the seven-minute mark. But they move so fast, plenty of time if they can score here. And complete again to Juan Miller gets free for another first down. Really nice job of protection inside. And then because of that protection, you're able to get isolated. And a poor job of tackling on the corner. You can't do that. Bob Stoops looks on as his offense marches down the field. Remember, Roy Finch, as Aaron discussed, banged up. So Brandon Williams getting time at running back. 
And this is incomplete. He tried to connect with Dewan Miller. That's a high-low concept, and it's three levels. And so what they're going to do is they're going to take Stills, get him to the top. Miller is in the middle, and underneath, which you don't see, and that you got to make that catch, which you don't see underneath. You see the back right there. They get you in three levels, and then they put you in between as a defender, and you have to make a choice. If you bite underneath, they throw behind you. Jazz Reynolds not in the game. He was banged up. Second and ten. Looks like pressure. He lofts it, and it is complete inside the ten. Down to the five to Trey Franks. They are knocking on the door, Matt. Bill Bennett dialed up a blitz, and they come with pressure off the edge. And it's well protected. And Landry Jones does a nice job of managing that pocket. See how he slid a little to the left? And then throws the ball where there's no defender and allows Trey Franks to go run it down. And here comes that jumbo group with Blake Bell. He has two touchdowns on the night. It is just too easy for Blake Bell, and Oklahoma is right back in this game. They have run that play four times. Every time, it's the same play, it's the same result. They don't even disguise anything. Here comes the full, comes a big fullback, Kowski. Trey Miller right back there. Just, just, just good power football, but you're going to be a fullback. That's the name you want on your back, Ripkowski. That just sounds like a blocking fullback, doesn't it? Sure does. And we welcome those of you who are watching USC's victory over Oregon. We've got a thriller here as well. Glad you're with us, Joe Tessitore, Matt Millen, and Aaron Andrews here in Waco, Texas, where the Baylor Bears have been relying on the big play like this to Kendall Wright. Robert Griffin III has passed for 433 yards and three touchdowns. He hooked up to Reese. And then the play of the game, the tip ball in stride, 87-yard touchdown to Kendall Wright that tied the game at 24-24. Baylor would score 21 unanswered points. Moments ago, Oklahoma closed into that lead, cut it down to a seven-point margin. And the big headline, Matt, is that Baylor's never beaten Oklahoma. 20 times they've stepped up to the plate over. Number five is in trouble, but still lots of time left. They believe they can do it. They have the opportunity to do it. Let's see if they can finish it. And Goodley will just down it. Let's check in with Aaron Andrews. Aaron? And Tess, as Oklahoma marched in for that score there, I had my eye on Robert Griffin the third and Kendall Wright as well on the sidelines. No emotion. They looked at the Jumbotron. They saw Oklahoma score. They looked back out on the field. Now, of course, they're in the huddle on the field. And again, these guys ice through their veins, Joe Tess. Just absolutely no expression. Stone Cold Austin as they take the field here. Top 10 teams have lost this week. Number two, Oklahoma State. Number four, Oregon. Clemson and could it be number five Aaron Andrews you are right on the money Kendall Wright is the guy since that big tip and touchdown we have not heard from him it's time for him to show up here's Griffin and he keeps it himself and surges ahead for 10 yards Kendall Wright, 196 yards receiving, and that big touchdown that we showed you. Baylor looking for a signature win, which would cause even more mayhem and confusion in these BCS rankings. Play action. Griffin is going to tuck it and run it. Remember, he has that world-class speed, and he slides down to the 45 for another first down. One of the dangers of having 
the running skills. Defensively, you can take everything away, but once you set that separation from the line and your backers get good depth, he takes advantage of it. Oklahoma fans looked up at that score all night long and saw Oregon trailing USC, hoping that number four right in front of them would take the loss. Well, they did, but now Oklahoma has to dig out of a hole. And they need to stop Griffin in order to do it. Inside handoff goes to Ganaway, just a couple of yards there. Let's show you the BCS standings. Of course, last night, the thriller up in Ames started to put everything into this blender and it's been mixed up all day long number two has gone down number four has gone down and what will happen and how will this unfold here in waco is the next question to be answered Second and seven now. Screen game. That's a backward pass. And that is going to be marked all the way back at the 37-yard line. As that lateral went out of bounds, Reese couldn't control it. Demontre Hurst was in defensively, so that'll back him up here on the third and long. Demontre Hurst read that really quickly. And even had he caught that ball, he would have been tackled for the loss. Of course, he went out of bounds and sets up this third down. As Aaron reported earlier, Ronald Lewis, Javon Harris starting defensive end and starting free safety for Oklahoma, injured and out. Can their defense come up big here? Third and 17. One on one on the outside. Griffin with lots of time, looking over his options, and then launches it downfield, but overthrows the intended target, Terrence Williams. He wanted Kendall Wright. Initially, he had one-on-one -on -one to the top side, Terrence Williams. Now uh, here's Kendall Wright on the top side. That's what he wanted. But the coverage by Fleming was impeccable. And they undercut him with Colvin, 14. And so it took it away, forced him to pull it down, and sets up this punt. And it sets up a golden opportunity for Oklahoma to try to salvage things here as they will get the ball back. Spencer Roth on to punt, and Kenny Stills sets up camp back at the 23. It's a line drive kick that backs up Stills to the 14. And he settles down at the 24. So the final chapter of a wacky weekend of top 10 college football in front of us. Stay with us. On the left, you have Baylor faithful, hoping to break the 0 for 20 streak against Oklahoma. On the right, you have Rally Caps. Number five is trailing by a touchdown, which is 329 to play. Finch back into the game, and he gets the call, gets a good block, a first down, and a lot more. That is Roy Finch, the little 5'7 sophomore who's in for Dominique Whaley, who was the starting running back and is out for the year, he got a good block from the left tackle Stevenson there, Matt. Yeah, that left side in this fourth quarter has been has been giving him some running room. They start it one way and come back the other way. Stevenson and Shedd have been doing a nice job. Finch again. This time, nowhere to go against that front seven of Baylor as it was K. Ron Johnson who was able to find him. Baylor defensively in their interior, they've stepped to the plate. We've seen Jean-Baptiste make some plays. We've seen K. Ron Johnson make some plays. They've done well. Brennan Clay now comes in as the back on second and 10. Jones with time and he goes to Clay out of the backfield. And it'll make for a third and about five. And so this is all four down from here. And Landry Jones shows real nice patience. He wants something deep, but he'll take it underneath. Here's Jones now. Over the middle and in stride is Jazz Reynolds. 
Last time we saw Jazz Reynolds, they were taking him in to look at that arm. He took a big hit early. And now he's back on the field making plays. And Oklahoma hurries back up to the line and snaps it. Just over two minutes to play, and that is complete to Jazz Reynolds. One of the young receivers trying to step in and step up for Ryan Broyles, the NCAA all-time leader in receptions, who is out for the year with that torn ACL. 2:04 and counting down the play. Andrew Jones, 432 yards of passing offense. They go with the screen, Trey Franks, and he's going to have a Sooners first down as the clock will stop as they move the chains. 141, fifth ranked team in the country, trying to stay in the hunt and make that argument for the BCS title game as a one loss team. James Hanna went off. There's a little confusion now as to what should be done. First down from the 18, Jones. Over the middle, oh. oh, and that was dangerous. As Rodney Chadwick had an opportunity. He wanted Kenny Stills in the worst way, and he locked on him, and that is very, very dangerous because everybody was right there. Chadwick had a chance to put it out of its misery right there. Thirty-five for Jones, but he needs a little more magic here. Complete to the eleven-yard line to Rattery. Rattery in for Hannah, who just went off a little while ago. Doesn't have the same movement that Hannah has. Third down, they can get a first down at the eight-yard line. Four-down territory. Jones, plenty of time. Goes with Clay. First down, and he scoots out. It'll be first and goal, Oklahoma, with 55 seconds remaining. And now they sub in Blake Bell, the six foot six, 245 pound, bruising back of a quarterback. And with that, personnel group coming in Baylor head coach Art Bryles calls a timeout be sure to stay tuned after our game tonight for the Ford wrap up with Robert Flores glad you're with us here in Waco what has been a wildly entertaining game all night long Joe Tessitore alongside Matt Millen and Aaron Andrews and Baylor has never been in a spot like this to try to beat number five at home in a game that means so much this late in the season. Baylor has never beaten Oklahoma. 0 for 20. Blake Bell, and he's been in. He's run it four times for 10, 10 yards, but he's had three touchdowns. They actually refer to this package of him coming in as the belldozer, and let's see if he plows straight ahead. Last time they were in their formation, the last few times, they're going to run a power back inside. They've not, Baylor has not been able to stop it. Also has Trey Miller there, the fullback with him. Here he goes. Bell into the end zone. He does it again. His fourth touchdown of the game. So a little bit of a change, but the same personnel group using the same power, this time play side, instead of bringing it around. Looks like they're gonna go Blake for two Bell here. is staying on the field. The officials are gonna have a review here, but Blake Bell was not running off, and place kicker Michael Honeycutt was not running out, Matt. No, they have not. And I'm, when I'm saying they, this Baylor defense has not stopped this power all night long. Ripkowski, Millard, Shed, 74 is Shed. 
Miller, 33. Ripkowski, 48. They just go blow right through the middle of this defense. Let's see if his knee is down anywhere. His knee's down, but the ball's over. Now the ball's over by about two feet at that point that his knee is down, but replay official David Ames is taking a look here. Now, you say they haven't stopped him. He has scored four touchdowns with the power game down at the goal line. But does that give you enough faith to go for two? Doesn't matter what we think, I'll tell you that right now. But I'll Well, tell that's you. the decision being made. Well, Josh Heupel is going to make that decision along with head coach Bob Stoops. And what they're saying is we have been winning the line of scrimmage. We have been beating them, changing the line of scrimmage to their side of the ball. Nobody stopped them all night long with that play. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. So they pull within one, and now the decision to be made. And keep in mind of what's on the line. Oklahoma State, number two, was upset last night up at Ames. Oregon, number four, was upset. And Oklahoma is trying to stay alive. And be a part of that argument for the BCS national title game. They want to end this sucker right this? here. This is big. Bob Stoops making the decision to go for two. Key those fullbacks. We're going to call a timeout. Baylor took the timeout. Timeout. Baylor. 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 A week ago, Baylor survived a two-point conversion attempt. That was against a struggling Kansas team, and that was a fade route to the corner. You likely know what's coming straight at you if this group stays on and the field. And what this is about, Joe, this is all about numbers. That's what this whole thing is about. And so defensively, you have to know where how you're deploying your guys. You're going to have four on their five. You have to be an advantage. You want to be in a numbers advantage. That's what you want to be able to do. But I've got to tell you, with this formation, the offense can dictate where the numbers go because they can take the fullbacks in the backfield and get them to every either side of the ball. That last touchdown we saw, they stayed play side and just blew right through them. Again, number advantage, Oklahoma. If they stay with this jumbo personnel group, you got Trey Miller at 249, the fullback, Rukowski at 255, and Bell, the quarterback, at 245. And that's the three in the backfield, on the field. Two-point conversion attempt. Flag came in there, and there was motion. Now they'll have to kick it. Ball start. Offense. Number 74. Five-yard penalty. Retry. That was a gutsy, gutsy call by Bob Stoops. He wanted every bit of it. It's that time of the year. Risk reward. But now the decision made for them. Shed. Just that movement right there makes the decision to kick this extra point. So on comes Michael Honeycutt, the redshirt freshman walk-on kicker to tie the game and keep hope alive in the BCS. 38 to 38. 51 seconds remain. Well, Joe, we said who was going to step to the plate? And the answer was real simple. It's Landry Jones. Landry Jones, 447 yards of passing, and the last drive when they needed to make the big play, he came through. Started with the running game, and it was Roy Finch out the left side. And then Landry Jones took control, patiently moving them down the field, and when the big play presented itself to Jazz Reynolds, it was there. Goes to the tight end, back underneath to Rattery, and then this throw to Clay, which sets up the belldozer for six. Blake Bell, 6'6", 245. Four touchdowns, the last of which ties this game. Fifth tie we've had. Oklahoma scored two touchdowns in the last five minutes and four seconds.
Landry Jones has made one poor throw here tonight, which was an interception. And then he's come back. And guess who gets his turn, though? Man. Exactly. Now comes Robert Griffin the third. And Goodley will take a knee. And one of the most dynamic playmakers and exceptional athletes in all of college football will have his crack at it. Not too shabby of a night so far, huh? 433 yards, three touchdowns. One of them called back. One of them dropped. Another one just missed, missed by a few inches. Or that thing would be over 600 yards. Now he is one of four FBS quarterbacks with over 9,000 passing yards and over 2,000 rushing yards in what has been such an exciting career here in Waco. You see the wind. It is going into their face. The wind is going right to left. They're going into the wind here with 51 seconds to play in a tie game against number five. Now is the time that the Oklahoma defensive front needs the same pressure they had to start the game. They're going to keep it on the ground with Ganaway. No timeouts for Baylor. Well, they're saying they're going to go to OT. And now Oklahoma will say, well, we've got three of these. So they will take a timeout as Bob Stoops will try to manage the clock and see how this plays out. Well, let's update you with those BCS standings. Number one, LSU unharmed. Number two took it on the chin up in Ames. Alabama, they're sitting there as a one-loss team with a glossy resume. Oregon, in a thriller against USC, they go down. And Baylor trying to do the same to Oklahoma in a tie game here. If Oklahoma survives, well, they're still in what's going to be a wild argument for a few weeks as to who should play for the BCS title. Second and six, remember the two timeouts for Oklahoma remain. Griffin, he's gonna keep it himself and he is dangerous in full stride. Griffin picks up a block but could not stay in bounds, but a big gainer out to the 45 yard line with 36 seconds remaining. And that timeout just turned around and bit him in the rear end courtesy of Robert Griffin's speed. Boy, as soon as he saw the coverage, he reversed his field and he was out the gate to the left side. That's Aaron Jones. Twice he has hit a 50-yarder in his career. Some more real estate to be conquered for the Bears. Here's Griffin now trying to escape the pressure. And Griffin into midfield, into Oklahoma's side of the field. And that stops the clock at 28 seconds. Well, Thomas Wirt got his horse. If he can run, we know that Griffin has world-class speed. But Wirt saw that and knew that he had a lot of green and forced him out of bounds. That's, actually, that's a big play by Thomas Wirt. They need about 13 more yards for that successful range of Aaron Jones. Pressure off the edge. It is complete to Kendall Wright. Kendall Wright gets through, and Kendall Wright is down inside the 34, where Aaron Jones has hit before. 21 seconds as they move the chains. The clock stops momentarily. Remember, no timeouts for Baylor. Empty backfield for Griffin. He has time, launches it to the end zone. Touchdown, Terrence Williams!
extra point just sneaks through. A 34-yard touchdown with eight seconds remaining. Robert Griffin III adds to his legacy. 479 yards and four touchdowns on a magical night. And he buys the time with his feet, and then his eyes find the back of the corner. But keep in mind, Art Bryles was willing to let this thing go. He was going to run the clock out, but they tempted fate, and fate answered with a six-point throw to seemingly finish this game. It seems there has always been something about Robert Griffin III, be it his dynamic story of being a world-class track guy who tried to convert his skills to be a passing quarterback, or his season-ending knee surgery in 09 and having to work his way back, and these thrilling finishes he has provided time and time again with an athletic skill set that is unparalleled in the game right now. A school record 479. Oh, by the way, he's rushed for 72. And he single-handedly made it all happen there on that last-minute drive. Only eight seconds remain. I'm still stuck at the timeout by Oklahoma. Well, they thought maybe. They wanted to see if they could manage it. Instead, Griffin struck. And now the squib kick. He takes a bounce. That's a live ball. And Baylor tries to come up with it. And they may have. And they have. Baylor is going to close this show. A special team's mistake by the Sooners. They're bringing the ball back to midfield. And that bench where Baylor stands five seconds away from beating Oklahoma for the first time. 0 for 20 prior to tonight. They're just going to squib it through, and no one makes the decision to pick it up. Roy Finch goes down, and then it's live ball. And that's just oh, that a great job. That was Clay Fuller. Clay Fuller with Paul tries to pull it in with his feet. And when the story of this college football season will be told, they will remember this weekend. That put everything upside down. Iowa State, USC, and Baylor just made a mess of the BCS. Forty-five to thirty-eight. Four top ten teams lose this weekend. Baylor's first win over Oklahoma comes in dramatic fashion on a night that Robert Griffin III sets the school record for passing yards and total offense. Art Bryles, the head coach who's been building this program at the small private school Take it on the big boys time and time again. He finally knocks one out of the park. What a tremendous job Art Bryles has done. Aaron Andrews is with the star of the night. The star of the night. And I, how are you still standing with over 500 total yards for yourself? Our offensive line did a great job the whole game. We knew it was going to be a war, and uh, I'm glad we came out with the victory. When you walked off the field after you threw that touchdown to Terrence Williams, you just sat there and you had no expression on your face. What was going through your mind? God works in mysterious ways. And, uh, you know, we had a great game today. That touchdown was a testament of that. So to win a game like that, pretty special. This school has never been in a position like 
this before. Biggest win in school history. They're chanting RG. What do you think about this moment? It's a great moment. I'm glad we can share it with you. Now I'm going to go celebrate with my teammates. They're actually chanting Heisman, by the way. Go celebrate. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Let me tell you something, Aaron. The Heisman race is wide open just like the BCS race. And Robert Griffin III just put forth his resume. An absolute thriller here in Waco. Number five is a loser. Baylor beats Oklahoma for the first time. They were 0 for 20 coming in. 45-38 your final. Be sure to tune in next week to ABC Saturday Night Football, 8 Eastern. Notre Dame takes on number nine, Stanford. For Matt Millen, Aaron Andrews, and the crew, I'm Joe Tessitore. So long from Waco. Let's get you to Robert Flores for the four.